Welcome to the 71st episode of the Nerddom and Other Nonsense Anime Podcast. Today, we are covering the ninth week of the fall 2018 anime season. As always, we include timestamps in the description of the YouTube video and podcast feed. If you only want to hear about one or two specific shows, if you're like a baby or something, since we like spoil everything, and if you want to whine about it, I mean, I don't want to hear it. Um, my name is Kat, and ora! If you make a move on my turf, I'll run over you with my motorcycle, you punk-ass bitches. Also with me are Leo and Becom, the other punk-ass bitches. <laughs> I'll be your punk ass bitch. I'm fine with that. I'm just trying not to laugh during that baby part. I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> well, I mean, it is. I don't know. I, I think people who like whine it. about spoilers are kind of being wimps. Like, you'll be okay. Uh, well, the idea behind this podcast is they've seen the episode we're talking about. So, I mean, but you always <laughs> yeah, are, are going to. Let's be honest. Like, okay, it's just well, we, that's true. I'll, I'll be slightly yeah. like, ah, like on spoilers. Like, because I got spoiled on a lot of things. I've been spoiled on like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. And I'll, and I'll look at it well, and I'll be like, that's sad that I got spoiled. But, well, but that's I'm why not we upset. put it up front. I'm not like, yeah, that's I'm why we put curious. it up front like that and then give time stance so you can skip around if you want. <laughs> well, but, exactly. I, but I'm just saying, some people get like, as if you have stabbed them in the stomach and they are like curled up on the floor crying. Because you told them something. True. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had spoilers actually ruin something for me. Yeah. Like, and if they did, that thing wasn't very good to begin with. But yeah. that's just how I feel. Uh, but we had some nonsense this week. Uh, I'll go into my nonsense first. It's video game nonsense. Uh, I nonsensically bought fucking Smash Brothers for the Switch this week. I haven't played Smash Brothers like really a lot since like the Nintendo 64. So it's been a while. Like I played a little <laughs> bit of melee with friends, like, and I play a little bit of smash for like Wii for with friends as well. But man, so getting back into smash was really interesting. Uh, it like felt the same, but like very different. And now there's like a million characters and I don't know what any of them do. Uh, so it's hard to like fight against all these like character lists that you're just not familiar with. Uh, but the other problem was the online. So I play with my friend who lives all the way across the country, but like that shouldn't necessarily be like an issue. I play with people like around the world and like destiny too, and don't have huge issues like this. Like, so I'm playing smash and like the first match online has so much lag that is basically unplayable. Like every you, 10 seconds. It's so bad. Have you ever played any other game on Nintendo's network? Uh, I've played Mario Tennis, uh, when it was in demo online and that actually worked really well. Um, but yeah, also I had to like sign up for the free trial of like the Nintendo switch online service for this. Uh, and so, so this is like the first time I've had to use Nintendo switch online for like any of these competitive games. And so it was a little weird cause it's like, it's not Xbox live. It's not PlayStation network. It's mm -hmm. very bare bones. It also costs less, but like, Man, if Smash, like, their, like, premiere game is having all these problems, like, yeah, I had a bunch of lag the first game. I disconnected in the middle of the second game because their servers weren't, like, working. <laughs> and then the third game was fun. Like, it was it was a good game. Like, everything worked well. But, like, it's, if it's, like, one out of three, <laughs> it's not was a this, good place to did be. You, did it just launch, the game? Yeah, yeah, it just launched, like, Okay, that could have been part of it, too. Absolutely, yeah. So, like, I, I hope that they continue and improve. They did say, like, oh, you should buy the Ethernet adapter for the Smash console if you want more consistent internet. And it's just, like, you know, you could have, like, built that into your stupid console, <laughs> Nintendo. Like, every other freaking <laughs> console has it. It's so ridiculous. But anyway, that was my nonsense, just Smash. Oh, man. Okay, uh, mine's video games also, so I'll just go next. Oh, uh, shit, you yeah, guys I mean, are, I, like, piling it on. You're, like, video game central <laughs> this week. I like it. There you well, go. This was, this was a video game podcast starting out. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, true. It's not so anymore, bitches. I've, <laughs> I've been, since Forsaken dropped for Destiny 2, I've been playing it pretty consistent, consistently, but now that, the, like, the Black Armory's dropped, like, I'm on there every day again, and it's pretty awesome. And like the Black Army has like the bounties; they're pretty fun. Uh, it's just fun trying to get the re rolls on the weapons until you get like, that perfect roll, then you can brag against your friends, and then they hate <laughs> you for it. Yeah. Uh, the forges are kind of challenging, but they're pretty fun. And also, it's 
it's also the next event, which is the donning, which happens every time around this year. It's basically their Christmas event. And in this one, you get to bake cookies. And it's actually kind of fun because <laughs> you kind of got to kill certain enemies for certain ingredients and then make them. And they're all named after like stuff in the game. So like if you know anything about the game, like you read the names and you just snicker to yourself like, wow. <laughs> I heard like one of the ingredients was like cabal machine oil or something like, <laughs> like cabal oil, uh, ether cane. And then there's one called personal touch is what you get from like melees. If I think right. And then there's one called like bullet spray and another one called vex milk, which has been a vex thing milk. forever. Nice. <laughs> like taken pe- butter. Just, yeah. All that funny stuff. Perfect. And like, yeah. And like just from D one, like one of the names is Gallahorn doodles. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, it's yes, and just radio Larian pudding. So yeah, just crazy random stuff. But <laughs> oh, very fun. I'm waiting for you to get back into it, Bcom. One of these days, I will. Uh, oh man, Cat, what was your nonsense? Do you have anything this week? Uh, so I mean, uh, my work. We did like. You know, like those donation drives where each like a family is assigned like a kid, and they give them like a bunch of shit for the holidays. So my work was like, we're all going to shut down the office for a day. We're going to go out there. We're going to, like, help, you know, whatever. And I just got really pissed off throughout the day at, like, how badly these people donating read directions. Because, like, it says specifically, (laughs) like, don't put any food in there. If you put food in there, we have to throw it out. Can't tell you how many fucking bags had food in it. Also, they're like... Don't wrap any of the gifts because we have to go through all of them to make sure you're not like putting a blade in there or like <laughs> sprinkling rat poison on it. And get guess what? Mm-hmm. Like every other bag had all of the gifts Rapping. wrapped. So we so mm-hmm. I got I got the very odd experience of like seeing these beautiful gifts and just being like, ha ha, not anymore, fucker, and just like ripping them all open so we could <laughs> check them <laughs> like over and over. So that was my day. One day this week felt kind of mean so you spent yeah. your day opening little kids gifts nice that, yeah, sounds, that sounds just right up your alley cat yeah that is the grinch you stole christmas yep. um also i i don't know i had uh someone introduce me to this really old martial arts game speaking of games called absolver and i had some uh-huh. fun with that just because i was like cool. Ooh, look at the buttons you can do things so i had kind of some fun with that because uh, cool. i'm so new to video games i was like oh look if i push this it does this and, and of course they were just standing on the sidelines being like yes that's that's the way that works when when you play I don't, a game i don't think absolver is actually that old it just looks old because it has like a weird uh graphical style i think that came out like a year or two ago i can't remember though okay i've seen that game yeah yeah that's pretty cool so I, i've told my boyfriend uh, that he should get it too and that we should d- resolve all of our fights by both of us going into Absolver and we'll have like a match. And whoever wins nice. wins the fight. It's like epic and perfect. <laughs> this is our new Yeah. It only came out last year in August. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought oh, yeah. it was pretty recent. It has a cool uh, aesthetic to it. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. It is fun, actually. Although it is annoying because when you are going through and, and this is coming from like a complete novice in video games. You know I didn't grow up with them at all. You go yeah. through, and like every other person just tries to fight you, and you're like, "Dude, I'm doing something. Leave me the fuck alone." <laughs> like I didn't ask to fight you, and they like go around in circles around you, like weirdos. And you're like, "What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you going in circles around me?" Like, Leo, wh- all right, we need to uh, start doing let's plays with cat. <laughs> yes, it's so funny. You're saying this, Cat, and Vcom and I know exactly what's going on. They yeah. found themselves a blueberry, and they love everybody loves to fuck with a blueberry. What's a blueberry? What do you mean? A noob, basically. Oh. Well, I don't they know. They don't know what they're doing. But yeah, so that's obnoxious. I'm just like, leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying to do this quest, and they're like, let's go in circles around this bitch, and I'm just like, the hell. <laughs> but it was fun, mostly. So. Take her into a private match on Destiny 2 and just see if she can even damage one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think she could. I I'm still trying to figure out the controller. Like, it says things like, push the left trigger button. And I'm like, Wh- which button? There's like four left buttons. And it it's takes the one me- labeled LT. Well, I don't know. It's <laughs> well, not it's like the one that feels like a me. gun trigger. It's the bigger one. 
I, I know, I, I'm figuring it out slowly. It just seems <laughs> I, I feel like like a very old person picking up a smartphone for the first time and being like, "Which? How do I push this?" You know. Yeah, it's like a whole through. new language you have yeah. to learn. So it looks like we have yeah. a new segment called "Playthrough with Cat." Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, but we do talk about anime sometimes, so uh, we might as well get into that. So, Leo, why don't you start it off? All right, start off with Girl in Twilight, Episode 9, Facing Twilight. Uh, it's just super quick flashback of, like, Sirius uh, running from some kind of, like, clutter dome, taking over her town, when suddenly, like, her little brother disappears, just, like, instantly, out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. But did, uh, didn't you see this this whole, what they reveal this episode coming? Because I kind oh, of saw yes, it coming. yes, yes. It's yeah. like I it's in my notes. I'll get to it. Uh so all our girls meet up with Sirius Scott and she explains that if the linked person doesn't have a body to inhabit, then nobody could have transferred over. And since the you and Nana of her world got caught in the events ten years ago, she most likely ended up in some other used body that's here and it's probably sexy used body and and mm. it's kind of weird because they both then share the body consciously. So hmm. Yeah, that was awkward for a second. I couldn't figure it out because I thought there were two of them, and then it was clear that there was one of them, and it was very confusing until they sort of revealed that. Okay, yeah. I want to poke a hole in this. So, yeah. how did sexy you get here? There was no other you to inhabit. All I remember her saying is like, "I came here to check something out," and I right. So I think she's separate from. Does she have to make? I don't think she makes links with yous when she travels between worlds because she hasn't before. Yeah, because I guess Sirius yeah. God doesn't either whenever she goes to the other world. But then if Asaka went to her world, she would have taken her over. Right. I think so. There's, there's a hole here somewhere. This doesn't quite add up. They're special <laughs> in some way. They're outside of the whole like uh, equalizer system, I think. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I know we're supposed to try to make sense of stuff, but I think this one stumped us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out eventually. Uh, so the Something may come up later on that go, that makes you go, oh. So we'll find out. Serious guy continues to explain that the clutter only stopped expansion because of substance under the tree that's called Twilight Amber. Which uh, they she never then explain shows, what it is. They're just like, ooh, this mysterious thing, it was, and now it's gone. It was just there under the tree. That's that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. She then shows them a room of like the crystals she has been collecting from the de- defeated uh, clutters in hopes they will turn back when they defeat the Twilight King. She then shows them her soldiers training with these, I think I believe she called them astral blades that allows them to fight the noises since mm-hmm. they aren't equal equalizers like the girls. Uh, she also gives them upgraded transforming Walkmans with all the bells and whistles, except for Asuka since she ha- isn't an equalizer yet. Uh, they go back to the control room and Sirius Scott shows them that they detected an anomaly that is more powerful than a clutter. She's thinking it might be the Twilight King. Uh, they've also lost lost track of it and are trying to find it again. You, meanwhile, is trying to make it to the tree, but she keeps she just can't find a path. And then she gets attacked by like these three little kids, and they're like throwing mud bombs at her, and they drop like dirty, stinky, smelly water on her. And it's, I don't know. It's, it's I mean, okay. that is no joke. Have you ever like smelled like swamp water? But you oh, live yeah. in Indiana, yeah. You've smelled it. Like that's. <laughs> I mean, I would rather but, roll like, in poop than. Don't get dunked in that. <laughs> oh, Let's yeah. be real. <laughs> so, uh, serious guy. She sees us on her little camera system, and she's like, tells the kid, tells the kids to stop, and she's like, bring her back to the base. And then on the way, like a fourth child shows up who's hiding under a hood, and I'm just like, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was like. All right, we know who this is. Like, <laughs> this is so obvious. <laughs> I think you said you're like. Why would the show have any reason to hide this guy's face if he wasn't whatever Kyo is Kyo, his name? I yeah, think. yeah, it has to be Kyo. Just, yeah. What? So. Uh, and then, kind of back at the base, like the the, twi- the Twilight Amber concentration levels start rising, and they speculate that the Im- individual might be coming closer, which is causing it to act up. Uh, and then Sirius Kai gets on the kids for leaving the base, and one of them named Takumi runs off, and like the girls all go after them. And then they come across like the soldiers that are, they're like down. They got like smear, spheres of twilight around their heads. And then that's when they run into that hooded boy. He then runs outside to the sacred tree and he puts his hands on it. And they say he's like consuming the matter inside the tree. And then like 
those giant, you remember the giant serpent noises that were in the first episode? Yeah. Well, they show up and the three girls fight them off. I mean, they pretty much just wreck them. And then like a really, really giant version of one shows up. It's got like multiple heads. And this time they're not doing as well. And like you wants to transform and help since she's in sexy you's body. But for some reason, uh, sexy you is not letting her. She's holding her back. Yeah, so, I found that interesting. I, I I assume this means that sexy you is on Kyo's side or something like that. Like we, yeah, episode nine, we still don't know what her motives are. Okay, yeah, it's so. interesting. Also, yeah. did you find this like whole battle sequence kind of contrived? Like throughout the whole thing, I sort of felt like there should be some sort of like idol song in the background with like a <laughs> simple <laughs> gear, yeah. Sailor Moon. So, you know, like, and there should be the whole train because I was like, oh, this is getting very, uh, like magical girly. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I do kind of agree, though. I do think, uh, it was a like a pretty nice looking like battle, f- like fight, like, right. uh, especially when Asuka gets involved and starts like skating up like the, the arm of one of those like serpents or like the neck, I guess. Like, it looked good. It was, like, the best-looking fight in the show since, like, episode, like, two or three, whenever that other big fight was. Uh, so I was, like, happy to see that, at least, that they're, like, putting some more animation effort into the fighting. But I agree with you that I was just like, oh, it's, like, another fight. Okay. They Didn't also kept like high Chloe's stakes. weird, like, dome tank thing, which I did not like. I thought they would get rid of it. Once they got out of the... I was you like, mean oh, you were hoping no. they would get rid of yeah, it? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's here to stay. I was sad. Um, yeah, it does not look flattering at all. <laughs> yeah, so like we're saying, Sirius God then shows up and joins the fight. Uh, she's, you know, like, you see a lot of fights, and then, like, obviously they need to go after the boy, which so she does. So I was like, good for you. Uh, like, she shoots a beam attack, but he has some kind of shield around him, which seems to be stopping it. So she's like, all right, I'm going to switch to the melee, and she goes in for, like, a melee attack. And it's pretty cool, because she's got, like, these thrusters, and she's like up against it trying to break through and the thrusters get you know get bigger then she finally gets through and like pins the boy but it was too late and like the tree disintegrates and then the twilight amber comes out of the ground and disappears and then like you see all the twilight spheres around the world continue to expand again and consume everything and then that's like when sirius got asked asuka to take takumi with her and gives him a walkman so he can be the link uh th- she then goes back to fighting the boy and gets a glimpse of his face, and oh, guess what? <laughs> he, look, he looks an awful lot like Kyo. <laughs> uh, and like Asuka wants to go and help her, even though there's not a damn thing she can do. So they like they have to hold her down while they transport back to their world. And as soon as they get back, back Asuka like takes the Walkman from one of them and tries to go back to uh, Siriska's world, but it's like giving an error and won't let her go. Like kind of like it's been destroyed. Like now. it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Which that might mean that Siriusca is gone, uh, unless she got out also. But I don't know. Like, I don't think she would. She seemed like she was like resigned to her fate. Right. Unless Sexy You came back and like saved her. I don't know. Like that didn't make I, sense I, either. I, I was trying to think what what did Sexy You do then? Because as soon as you know the You went back to her world, then whatever control she had over her body, if she did, then she has it all back. Right. So, so maybe that'll be it. Maybe like Sexy You will like have. I don't know. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> but it seems I, I I doubt that like you know like off screen death. Like I doubt, doubt that Sirius is really gone. Uh, if she is gone, then I don't feel like they played up the drama of this episode kind of well enough. Like they could have done a better job of that. Like I, I don't even even so like I don't think they played up the drama of this episode as much as they could have with like her whole world being destroyed. Like. She was, like, yeah. kind of stunned, but I didn't really feel it. You know, like, you think you would feel it more. But, well, uh, but, I mean, yeah. she might just be in, sh- you know, shock. Like, yeah, like when someone tells you, like, oh, someone you know died, like, you don't feel it right away, right? Maybe it's kind of like that. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Also, she's mm-hmm. seen this, like, coming for a long time, I guess. So yeah. she's had time to sort of process, like, wh- how she would react to it. But I don't know. Uh, so, like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I was pretty, I, I kind of had known that this might happen, like, the whole thing with, like, the kid is, like, you know, Asuka's brother is the the king of the Twilight or whatever. Like, yeah. how, how do you think they're going to reconcile this, though? Because they have to have a good explanation as to how this is even possible 
I don't really know well, how they're going to have a good explanation for this. I, well, they seem to be hiding a bunch of like stuff from us. I mean, for instance, sexy you, we have no idea what her motive is up to this point. I think there's just a lot of information they haven't given us yet. So we sit here and ponder and try to figure out what is going on. Yeah, we don't even know much about why Kyo died in the first place that I can remember, but I'm sure the They just said it disappeared. Yeah. That's it. Oh, he and just then, disappeared. Like, All right. Yeah, yeah, and then like uh, does the Twilight King actually have a conscience and he has his own motives for what he, why he's doing what he's doing? I don't know. Hmm. I'm sure I mean, Kyo that- has his reasons. Like either he was told or he believes that he can save his sister or his family probably by doing this. That's my guess. If he is a moral like king, you know, or mm-hmm. like a moral villain, but uh, if he's just like an evil villain, that would be kind of boring. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait <laughs> just and see. Evil to be evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll. I guess we'll find out. It just it could be convoluted, or they could actually pass something that makes sense. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody, go ahead and get naked for this next show. Well, I mean, everyone gets naked. Let's be real. (laughs) Golden Camry, second season. Yes, everybody. Well, all the men are at least naked this episode. I'm sure Kat enjoyed it. I was like, what the fuck is this? It's almost like someone went up to the staff of Golden Camry and they're like, listen, we need more fan service for the girls watching this show. We haven't had enough. (laughs) There's all of this yaoi of Golden Camry. We need to appeal to our audience. There is a lot of yaoi of Golden Kamui. So, I mean, not that I even uh, know or anything. Oh, you've been looking it up? But, <laughs> I mean, I'm in yaoi groups. I see things, Leo. Anyway. Um, so, that, that is my theory on what happened with this episode. And last episode, for that matter. With the whole, like, ooh, we're going to eat this. And then we're all going to be amorous towards each other. Thing. Yeah, they were like, "We need oh, more fan boy. service for the for the ladies," and I appreciate it. It was good fan service. <laughs> so, episode twenty one, the sound of an ambush. Uh, they, oh man, the, the, <laughs> I did. I like they put on the screen what a surface who this person was, but then like I didn't feel like going back, so I was like, "They're with a the surface third twice removed, second cousins or <laughs> uncle or something." Oh, that yeah. like you're like third like. Oh, sisters 13th I can't remember it was so ridiculous did anyone else get her really confused sister's daughter I don't know at the beginning because I was like wait where are they what's happening why are they talking about blind people and then all of a sudden they're attacking and I'm like what or was that just me that that was just you here I I, I got it in the notes Um, okay good so yeah her very distant uncle is telling them about like some blind bands that don't use any torches and they're attacking and robbing people in the dark. I guess they attacked a Nainu village also. And he's just like telling them to be wary of them. And also that their leader has strange tattoos on his body. And Chira, she remembers this man from prison as Anji Tony. He and his bandits became blind by working in sulfur mines that attacked your eyes. And it was uh, shut down after a while, but apparently started operating again. And there's rumor that the warden in Nudo is rumored to be offering prisoners to help work, work them. Ah uh, man, don't you don't you love foreign languages? Inudo, Indo, <laughs> in, in, Inudo, yeah, Inudo. <laughs> uh, so they go to the to the uh, local hot spring, and Sugimoto visits a masseur, and he is surprised at Sugimoto's body. Uh, Bcom, you Ooh, were very interested in this scene. <laughs> yeah, I just like the conversation between the masseuse and like uh, Sugimoto about like mm. your your wounds should have killed you by now, and. Like, Sugimoto, like, uses that, like, Ainu belief that, you know, uh, a person's belongings are destroyed so the souls of those items can go to the afterlife uh, with the people who own them. So, like, he's saying, basically, like, these wounds weren't big enough to take my soul away. And, like, Asirpa basically agrees, saying, like, well, the other reason is, like, your work here on Earth is not done. That's why you haven't been allowed to die yet. It was just, like, a cool, like nod to why he's immortal like you need to wound him enough to like destroy his soul which seems to be like a lot like that would take a lot so he's the ugliest looking masseuse i've ever seen so uh (laughs) hold on this is this isn't really well known uh masseuse generally tends to mean female oh yeah that's true and masseur is the male 
pronoun for it or whatever. That's correct. But, yeah. but there you I go. Think More you than just it's just use, interesting. Like, <laughs> massage therapist now, right? Like that's the in vogue term. True. Yeah, massage therapist. Yeah, but they're still referred to as masseurs and whatever. Bleh. So a surface stays behind as Sugimoto goes to the hot spring and she learns from the old man that the bandits use echolocation to move around in the dark. Uh, he gives her an example and she recognizes it as a strange sound she heard the night before. And then she's like, oh, shit, they've been following us. They're probably already here. This <laughs> is what I mean by, scene. and then it goes immediately into, they're being attacked by blind people. <laughs> like, it goes well, from, they... oh, by the way, there are blind people, to, we're being attacked by blind people, like, pretty damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, they the, at the very end of the last episode, I don't remember if it was an after credits or not, but they did show somebody on the road getting ambushed by somebody in the dark. Yeah, it was the it was this uh, Angie Tony guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> and then we get into the scene and there's just the third screenshot of like some guy's naked body in the hot spring. I just paused and I just start laughing. I was like, I was like, oh, here we, here we go again, guys. This is it's the last episode like, all over uh, again. Oh, look at that body. They're still in like the afterglow of that orgy from last episode. Like mm-hmm. haven't, haven't quite sweated it out yet. They're like, <laughs> I still appreciate your body. I got up close and personal with it before. I remember. That's, that's what they're all thinking. I, I want to know what their workout routine is because they're all fucking ripped. <laughs> they're all jacked. And also, yeah. Kira Ranke, I think it is, has like just like a chest of a lion hair. And yeah. also like a humongous <laughs> bush that is like conveniently hiding his junk later in the episode, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so of course you get these shots, but then they get ambushed by the bandits. Uh, because like I said, they've been falling the whole time. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of funny, but as they're like st- being surrounded and they're like kind of attacking him, like Shiraishi gets like knocked in the head repeatedly in like this comical fashion. Did you guys catch that? Yeah, like yeah. the guy like kicks him in the head and just like, Ugh, like, like leans and over it, slightly. <laughs> and then it cuts to somebody else getting like pinned to a rock and it cuts back to him and they hit him in the head again. Like, what is going on? Poor Shiraishi. But they haven't like fired on them or attacked him yet because uh tony doesn't want to hit the kid mm-hmm. but then that dog like just comes out of nowhere and he like bites the guy in the arm and the others use this to like escape and chirashi like immediately clotheslines himself on a branch and that's le- the last we'll see of him this episode um <laughs> uh, and then like they thought they captured sugimoto but he's like they're pinned him with his weapons but he's like it's gonna take a lot more than this amount of pain to hurt me so like he overpowers them and then a serpent like shows up with a torch looking for everybody and she walks up onto one of the guys and he's like, put that out. I guess they have a policy about killing kids. And then that's when Ogata shoots the dude because he was smart enough to hide his gun near them while they bathed. Like, I don't think he goes more than five feet from his gun. <laughs> yeah. And I'd, I would also like to mention everybody's naked running through the forest with their dicks out. <laughs> uh-huh. There's also like, I don't know if you have this. I'm sure you do, but convenient like huge mushrooms in the foreground where their dicks would right be at the perfect angle <laughs> yeah <It> was- <laughs> like constantly and it's so funny i love it uh, i would like to point this out because sukimoto finds a serpa and pulls her into his lap as they hide behind a tree i was like uh she's definitely up against his junk uh <laughs> yeah i thought about that too i was like this is a very awkward angle like if you came into the room watching the scene you'd be like Oh, this person is attacking this this little girl. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. Out of context, that does look real bad. Yeah. It looks horrible. <laughs> uh, but a serpent like doesn't even. She's not even faced by it. <laughs> Especially later on, when she touches his butt. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Tony then almost finds him by smelling Sugimoto's blood, but doesn't because Inkamart finds Tanigaki and Kiraranke, and they're like hushed whispers distract him. And like lead him away from them. Uh, and then the show just inserts this quick flashback of Wilk giving Inkarmart a robe before she leaves so that he will recognize her when she grows up and meets again. She doesn't think she will see him again because that's what her fortune told her. Uh, Kiranke then takes him to a canoe he found earlier and says they can cross the lake and take the long way back to the inn. But Inkamart doesn't want to get in because she can't swim and she has a bad feeling, but she was in a boat last episode. I mean, I guess she was running from the a hungry locust swarm, but yeah, she didn't seem to be sweating it too much in that boat that episode. I also thought about that. And I was like, yeah, she wasn't having so much trouble last episode. I think it's more about the premonition that she's had. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. 
Uh, as they get away, Tony has one of his bandits. He's like throwing rocks into the river to try to find them. And then like after he hears a little bit, he's like, throw it more to the left. And that's when it hits the canoe. And like he fires on the canoe and like, interestingly, Kira Ronke throws himself on top of Inkamart to shield her from the bullets. And we see Tanagaki get hit. We don't know where yet. And then the whole thing capsizes and like smacks Inka Martin in the head. And she goes down. <laughs> God, this, the transitions in the show from serious to just outright fucking absurdity is great. Yeah. As she's unconscious, she dreams of the bears coming to take her soul. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, that's what the Ainu, Ainu said happens. It's, yeah, it's like what Hoochie saw in her dream as well. Yeah. yeah. And Tanagaki. Sh- shows up and he like he flexes and his <laughs> shirt busts open yeah, and, and the, the buttons, buttons fly out and banish the oh bears and I was like this the fucking buttons. show <laughs> the buttons were bizarre I was like what's happening here I love it like, like I was like oh this is like a really cool way to show that like he's saving her from death well, it's like, almost uh, like they're I saying he's it. saving her with his manliness he's like I'm so well, manly yeah. That my manliness yes. banishes death itself. That's basically what this weird it, vision. At the end of the scene, <laughs> if there was any doubt in her mind that Inka Mart may have been nim- manipulating him, but she has fallen for him for sure. <laughs> I think at this yeah. point, yeah. I yeah. mean, and uh, like his ass is big enough that a bullet went through his <laughs> ass. That boy's got back. I don't blame her. <laughs> She's like, you could bounce a quarter right off that ass. Mm-hmm. I was so confused because, like, when he was underwater swimming up, I was like, "What is that? A uh, huge birthmark on his ass?" And I was like, "Oh, it's a huge bullet hole that went through his butt." <laughs> she she awakes to a, uh, which is funny because that means he stood up and like turned to the side when they were being fired upon. I don't know, or like when the boat was flipping. Who knows? Uh, she awakens to Tanagaki like pulling her up from the water and they make it to the shore. Yeah. And fortunately the bullet only passed through his butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> so Dawn starts arriving and with the light, Ogata and Sugimoto get two more of the guys before they all escape into their hideout. They go inside, but get locked in the dark with them. Uh, they get separated and the Serpa finds another way in. And when she comes in, she comes up to uh, Sugimoto's backside and she's like, hmm, hmm, Sugimoto, but it's her hands on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's so chill about everything. And then wait, do, do you have this? Like she spreads his butt cheeks and then sees like censored like Shiraishi face <laughs> over his butthole. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, uh, then Sugimoto takes out like one guy, and then Tony shows up, and they like get in a scuffle, and like they're kind of back and forth, and then they both have each other like gunpoint and sword point, and then just like out of nowhere, Hijikata shows up. And he gets Tony to step down because he says he is after the warden also, which is like Tony's big deal. And also you see uh, uh, Tatsuma, like he's breaking in the walls. And then when like a surface sees him, she's like, oh, Dick Sensei. (laughs) 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 She does love herself some Dick Sensei, doesn't she? Uh, Yes. Uh, And then that one lieutenant from whatever it was, a Surumis that was pretending to be a prison guard. Yeah, I guess his back, name is get, Usami. They finally said it in this scene. Yeah, And he gets back to him and informs him that the warden was using the money he got from loaning the prisoners to the mines to buy weapons. And he's got some pretty good ones. And then the rest of this fucking scene is insane. Oh, my God. Like, just, he just draws the... Oh, yes. Tell, tell him. Tell him about it, Leo. He's got he's got the mole on each side of his uh-huh. cheek. And, like, Surumi's <laughs> leaning over him, pressed into him. He's like, I will turn this mole into a running man. And I'll turn the other one into a running man. And the guy's, like, breathing real heavy, like, totally getting turned on. Mm-hmm. And he's like, look at them run together run towards each other, but they will never meet. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> this crazy the other, ear guy. The other the crazy guy. crazy ear guy's back there, like, going, <gasps> getting, like, all hot and bothered by it. But then, like, the other dude, uh, Koito. Oto Notion. He's, he's upset. Yeah, Koito. He yeah, wants, like, Koito, upset. Okay. He wants the attention. Koito is jealous. <laughs> the guy yep. with no ears is just, like, insane because he's fucked up in the head from having all this stuff cut off him. So he's not ex- he's getting all hot and bothered. He's more just, like, insane, and this is agitating him. And, of course, we know, like, everyone in this room is insane. And so I took a step back in this scene and i was just like this is a bunch of mentally deranged people this could be like uh, this this weekend like you know some soap (laughs) opera about mental you know mental health patients like (laughs) it's ridiculous (laughs) it's just it's so i don't know it's bizarre uh 
it was it was something. But the show now finishes. I kind of want to do that. I want to like <laughs> find someone with two moles on their face and draw like running people. <laughs> Good luck. That'd be like an inside joke. <laughs> That'd be a fun cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who would recognize it. That'd be pretty good. So, <laughs> okay, the show ends with Sugimoto. He's talking with Hijikata uh, about Kiranke and Inkamar basically being at each other's front fr- throats. And Hijikata apparently has a friend in town, and so they just kind of make up a thing like, "Oh, we're going to get our pictures taken, and we're going to send one to the Serpent's grandmother." So, and then they're also going to use you know the pictures of those two to possibly send to somebody else to try to dig into things and figure out who's really who and whatnot mm-hmm. because. There's a some something not but something quite not right about Kiranka's uh uh character like they don't something doesn't add up with his for the most part right yeah and whether Ikamar is even talking about the history correctly too so there's that there's that going on but they also trick Shiraishi into taking like an almost naked photo at the very end which is pretty hilarious like, just like spread eagled <laughs> yeah <laughs> spread your legs wider. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> that was just weird. Uh, I liked the uh, the use of that like weird like clicking like the stuff for like the echolocation. Like it was just like creepy and weird. Uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but I, I liked. It was just so weird. I liked liked it. I, I don't know. And I didn't mind that like this would seem to be like a really difficult thing to like actually use well. Though like the main guy Anji Tony had those like huge like wooden. Uh, things around his ears to like amplify the noise, and mm-hmm. even then, I was like, "This is this is kind of nuts." Like these deaf bandits. Well, and let's be honest, that looked ridiculous as fuck on him. Or not deaf bandits, blind bandits. Sorry, yeah, and it did look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it fit with the show. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's skip the next show. Okay, cat. Let's skip the next not, show, uh, bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The Leo next show skip it, is so. "Run with the Wind," which is also um, as we run with the as the wind turns. We could call it. I will admit, <laughs> it is getting a little soap opery. Thank but you. I like it. I still like it, but I will admit uh, its faults. So for for this episode, I'm going to call it "As the Wind Turns." Um, okay. As the wind runs, episode nine. <laughs> this episode is just your basic soap opera recap which it's like oh the thing happened last episode the drama you know like prince and and (laughs) kakaru being like you shouldn't be in this team you should give up and all of this and then there's like two scenes after that where all it is is like other characters reacting to the drama and being like he said that and i'm and i'm just (laughs) like come on do we have to do this do we but of course we do so, yeah. <laughs> you know, P- Prince was upset like about this and he stayed up all night reading and then he clarifies later like, "Yes, I read comics, not real books." Um, and then Prince asks Haiji if he thinks he can actually meet the required time, and Haiji's like, "Well, but you're getting better. I really enjoy running with you and it makes me re- feel like I can reconsider what it means to run." Which is kind of like the theme of the show in a way. But then it shows us this like flashback of Haiji, I guess, recovering from his accident. And yeah, like, like in the way he like limps, like trying to learn how to walk again. And I had this fucked up thought where it's like, oh, the way that Prince runs reminds Haiji of how he used to run and walk while he was doing physical therapy. That's really <laughs> fucking dark. That's really it dark. It is kind of dark. <laughs> but like okay it also explains why uh Haiji believes prince has a chance to become a better runner is he's like well i taught myself how to run again from like the ground up and like i know prince looks like me when i was basically crippled <laughs> but like there's a chance he can improve and become well, he, as good as he i doesn't am. literally have like pins in his legs so i don't know if he gets a pass <laughs> I don't know. That, that just was a bit dark, but interesting. Um, and then Prince talks about how, like, I really like the way that the team gets really synchronized. It's like in Comic Club when we read together and, like, we end up turning pages in sync and all of this. And Haiji's like, I don't <laughs> understand anything about what you're talking about. And Prince is like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just depressing. <laughs> 
Um, and then the second, there's like a quick second scene where Musa and the twins and Yuki and Takashi are also talking about the drama, like a bunch of mean girls. And they're like, what? Oh my God, this happened. And, um, the twins are like, yeah, Haiji told us not to tell anyone, but we are. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> they they kind of like realize as they say that, like, oh shit, we weren't supposed to say this. And they're like, yeah. you idiots. Uh, um, <laughs> Well, and then it shows Prince, like, exercising on the treadmill. And, like, he's walking upright. He doesn't look like a sloth. Oh, my God. So I guess he's getting slightly better. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, there's a scene where... Ni- this is probably the best scene in this episode, honestly. Where Nico is being chased by Haiji. <laughs> yeah. So Take my bento! Hi- yeah, Haiji, like, comes to the school and is like... Here's this bento. You should eat this bento. And Nico is basically like, "Fuck no! I'm not gonna eat a bento made by a man." And a grown ass like, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a grown ass man. I don't need no bento from no other man. And and Heidi's like, "But you need to eat your rice, Nico. Eat your rice." And it's it's all very hilarious. And yeah, it's it's a good scene. You should check that out. Mm. Um. But then later on, Yuki and the group are practicing, and they comment how everyone's time has improved, but Kakuro has, like, this sheet in front of him of all of his times, and, like, his time hasn't improved, and if anything, it's gone a little bit down, and he's just, like, so furious. Like, you can just see his face, like, fuck! Like, ugh. It's not good. Yeah. Um, and then... Then Haiji announces at the end of that practice that not everyone will be running in the next, like, practice meet that they're going to to make the times. Although everyone's going. So notably, Prince, King, and Nico aren't going to run. Obviously, Prince, because Haiji's like, there's no way you're making the time, and, like, I don't want you to quit the team, so I'm not going to have you run. (laughs) Um, King, I'm not sure why. And... Nico, it's pretty obvious, is because he's having issues as well. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about King either. I'm not. Maybe yeah, he's he just wanted okay. people there. Like maybe he realized that like Nico and King would cheer that the way that they did, and that would be something that Kakaru and Prince needed to see. Uh, maybe like how into it they were. I'm not sure, but like yeah, that was the one yeah, confusing the, person. Yeah, I was kind of like because King looks surprised too. I was like, hmm. Um, but yeah, Cockers obviously immediately gets this, like, stands up all dramatically and soap opery, and it's like, oh! And it's all, it's all like, oh my god, he stood up. Oh, such tension, <laughs> such drama! And I'm just like, yes, yes, we know. Um, the twins comment that they don't feel as intimidating as the other teams because they don't have uniforms, and I was just like, like, at the meet, and I was kind of like, like, the next day, yeah. Um, and I was kind of like, why don't they have uniforms yet? It feels like they should. I don't know what's going on with yeah. that. Um, it's kind of cheap. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a flashback of the night before where Haiji is saying that Kakaru isn't enjoying running like the rest. And that's why, and he's like implying, he doesn't say it, but Haiji is basically implying that's why Kakaru isn't improving because he isn't enjoying himself, which is interesting. Yeah. And as Kakaru is flashing back and thinking of this, the race starts, and Kakaru is suddenly transfixed by, transfixed by like the intensity of his teammates running, and like the way the teammates that aren't running are cheering all of the others on. And Kakaru just gets really into it and ends up cheering like really hard as well, which is something you would never expect Kakaru to do like in a million years. He's supposed to be like the Sasuke character. It was really interesting. <laughs> Um, and then Haiji is, well, he is, he's basically Sasuke. (laughs) I I agree. I agree. (laughs) He's like Sasuke too, basically. Um, but yeah. And then Haiji is cheering too. And it's all very epic. Um, it's clear that this experience of them cheering the other teammates on and it's very bonding and it's made them closer as a team, even though you find out like none of them achieved anything. (laughs) Which kind of sucked. Um, but, you know, still, they they got something accomplished. Um, 
And Kakaru is very embarrassed about how excited and animated he got. And, like, they, they kind of cheat tease him a little bit. They're like, you were yelling really loud. And he's like, shut up. You were yelling, too. And then they're like, aw, isn't he cute? And it's pretty adorable. Um, and then at the very end of the episode, Haiji and Kakaru are talking as Haiji tries to make dinner. And he admits, like... Kakaru basically admits like he did get into it and he felt the earnestness of everyone, but he still doesn't believe that they can win. He he even if they all do get their time, like he doesn't have faith that they can do this thing. Yeah. And while he's talking, Haiji is like trying to stir this fried rice in a big ass pan. And he just collapses on the floor. And it makes sense because earlier in the episode, you saw this very tiny brief shot. Of Haiji's mm-hmm. vision getting like a little blurry, at like I think he looks at a stopwatch or something in his in his uh, yeah vision. at the race yeah yeah and, and and at the time you're it's so quick you're just like oh okay whatever um so, but he collapses like on the floor and and like all the rice spills and I was like no the rice and then I was like oh I, I also be- was like yeah. oh the fried rice no <laughs> wow and then I was like oh I'm supposed to be like no Haiji but I was suddenly like no the <laughs> I was rice like, screw you Haiji I want that fried rice <laughs> I think that I think that pan's called a walk it's, it's a, a walk, walk yeah. yeah okay okay um, so so it's like the <laughs> typical uh, soap opera end of like and now someone's collapsed on the floor da, da, da. and it's kind of like come on two cliche soap opera endings in a row like let's let's get back to a little bit of reality I hope it does I'm still enjoying this the fuck out of the show though I'm just a little irritated so at I, the dr- yeah. an unnecessary drama I really hope that he's not like like sick or something like he doesn't have like an illness like you're lying april or something uh i'm hoping that he's just like exhausted from like working as hard as he has been to like move the team forward and like cooking all their meals and doing all their prep like i'm hoping this is just like uh inspiration for somebody or other people on the team to step up and like take part of the leadership role like into their own hands now that they actually care um and like support uh high G, like from you know from their end too like the way he's been supporting them i hope it's not just like oh high G's in the hospital now like what do we do without him kind of thing because that would be really cliche if so, if this involves know. cancer or some sort of respiratory disease yeah i'm gonna be upset yeah I don't want to see him there, coughing. No st- I don't want to see there being dramatic shots of like a tube in his <clears throat> nose. I don't want that. If, <laughs> if I see it, I'm going to be pissed off. I don't want to see the yeah. shot of him sitting in the hospital room with the, the uniform, looking sadly out the window. No, you're not doing this. Okay, run with the wind. You're better than this. <laughs> it, it's not a spoiler, but they tell you right away in the next episode. So Okay, that'll be. Okay. I'll, I'll be J- waiting to see that for sure. You could look at it during our break and you would know. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, okay, as cliche as like the Kakaru watching everybody cheer and like watching the termination of his teammates scene was, it was like so needed. Like it, I needed Kakaru to like have a revelation sooner rather than later that like, oh, everybody else is trying just as hard as I am. I need to stop being such an asshole. Like I need to at least believe in them, even if I don't believe in our own chances to like win the Kakune or sorry, the Hakune Ekiden at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, I just really liked the way that Haiji was like windmilling his arm because that's like a baseball thing, like a third base coach will do when he's like waving you home. And I just liked how stupid he looked when he was doing it and how uh, like I just like, like Kakaru's face during that scene where he just like is like shocked that people are cheering. And like then he starts yelling. It was it was, it was all good. That was my favorite scene of the episode, not the uh, uh, Haiji running after uh akihiro to give him a a bento that he made to look like his own face like akihiro's face smoking that was pretty impressive bento it was impressive artisanship but also kind of mean (laughs) because he's trying to quit smoking and i'm (laughs) sure i also thought that (laughs) i'm sure like that just reminds him that he wants a cigarette really bad and i was just like really (laughs) really not cool (laughs) (laughs) yeah Uh. Oh, Leo, what did you think? I learned the meaning uh, bored to tears. <laughs> did you cry? I 
I teared up for whatever reason <laughs> through the middle of this review, and I'm like, what is even going on? Am I staring at my screen too long? Or <laughs> Your eyes just got dry. <laughs> like, Oh, they got dry. Are you sure you're not just crying at your own childness, childlessness, like how childish you are? <laughs> no, this is boring as shit. You guys know I hate drama. I hate it. Yeah, this was a pretty drama. <laughs> it, like, it wasn't epi- the best episode. episode. But, but no, you're a like, little you know, picky I, too, Leo. I agree. This was not the most exciting episode. Though I'm glad that we got like another track meet. Like, I'm glad that we actually at least had a track meet soon enough. Like, so like they're kind of picking up the pace with like the events that actually matter bit. in this show. Um, it's I hope they keep that pace. This week is a lot of episodes like that where it's like it wasn't the best episode, but it yeah. was it was doable. I'm just like, what? What's up with epi- like week nine and like the kind of eh episodes? Is week? Yeah, I think is, we've been blessed with a lot of great episodes lately, and this was like a down week before the end cycle. Do you think that in in an anime season cycle, week nine is like the wet fart? That like the the <laughs> studio puts out like right before the last push, they're like, all right, yep. we gotta work hard the last few weeks, but like we can slack this one week. I don't know. Go- Golden killed it. Golden. Golden did is kill always it. killing it though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how Bcom's opinion has changed. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. It's kind of cute. even the the weird fan service has me going now. I'm I'm there really enjoying it. You just have to uh, come over to our those side. mushrooms. <laughs> Pat, tell me how you enjoyed that uh, bunny girl boy now can have sex with his girlfriend's sister in his girlfriend's oh yeah, the, sister's the body. For, the half foreign sister? Yeah. Or like his girlfriend in his girlfriend's sister's body. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it's hard to keep track. Okay, I wasn't the only one who had that weird ass thought. Like, this so, is really going to go to weird fucking direction. Yeah, yeah. I, and they haven't touched on that yet, which is good. No. But it could totally go there. Anyway, this, you know, the next episode of Bunny Girl sent by Sister Panic. So in every harem in Japan, there has to be the one girl that is a foreign girl with the blonde ass hair. (laughs) Because this is the rule of of Japan and harems. This is the way it Mm -hmm. works. that's, That's because everybody over there has black hair. Well, it's yes, like they it's have a very weird special thing. They're like, hair. "Ooh, we have to have the special one with the blonde hair." Ooh, so edo, well, so uh, sexy. I will tell. I tell you, the <laughs> the key to harm is the flavor of variety. Well, so. like, you never see other kinds of variety. You don't see like you want some, one of each. You know, you don't see some like sexy Spanish girl coming in to the anime and being they like, "Ooh, look at really me!" Don't really like the Spanish girls. But sexiness, <laughs> but but you don't. See that do you know you don't see like some you know some other variety you only see the blonde bitch who's half it's always half it's never like i'm foreign it's like i'm half foreign one of my parents was japanese and the other is from some other country and fyi (laughs) it's their favorite fyi if you are half japanese your hair is not fucking blonde that's not the way the genetics work. It's not. Black hair is a dominant trait. You don't mix a dominant and a recessive trait, and you get a, the recessive. That's not the way genes work. This has pissed me off. Next week, it can work that next way. Week, everybody if... can purchase this book on the rules of harm. <laughs> it can work that way if the dominant uh, res- like trait person also has a recessive blonde well, hair trait. But Okay, but that would be become, very unlikely. <laughs> but in Japan, where over like uh, yeah, isn't it like ninety five percent of the gene pool yeah. is Japanese? Do you know the the yeah. odds of anyone in that fucking family having a recessive blonde gene? Very Zippo! unlikely. Zippo. You would need both your parents to be both mixed. <laughs> yeah, for that to work. Pretty really. much. <laughs> anyway, now that I've, anyway. I've 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 vented my anger of years of this. Bullshit. All right. And it's not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so the second term begins, and Sakurta and Mai haven't seen like each other very much over the break because of that weird agency ban thing. And Maya was all like, oh, when school starts again, we'll see each other at school, and it'll all be good. But she hasn't been going to school. And so Sakurta's like, what's going on? 
I don't know what's going on. And then pretty immediately you find out that Mai and her little sister have somehow switched bodies. And that's why Mai hasn't been going to school. Ah, uh, uh, man. Okay. First we did Groundhog Day. And I think the twist on it gave it its own originality. But now the body swap, I, I couldn't help but roll my eyes. I was like, <laughs> are we really going to do this? Yeah. And we didn't even get like a weird physics explanation for this yet. I'm very upset. Like we didn't get like a bullshit physics I think, explanation. I think they gave up on the weird <laughs> bullshit. They're like, no one cares about these fucking. It, it, I care. Quantum, quantum <laughs> entanglement. Peacock, like, I want the bullshit explanation. I, know I it's do bullshit. want the bullshit explanation. I better get one next episode. I'm gonna be upset if I don't. Oh man, I oh demand the wool be pulled over my eyes. Says Peacock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, so later, so after they like tell you this rather abruptly, it's not like a slow like reveal either like the others were it's just very abrupt like in the first minute they're like oh they switched bodies yep that's what's happening and i'm like okay no no build up or anything um later so- and, and then you're half expecting my being my to go well I'm in my sister's body you want to give her a chest drive while I'm here? <laughs> i know it's like let's just fuck now it'll, it'll be fun no at least she didn't do that um <sighs> Later, Sakuta goes to Mai's house, and apparently it's his first time being there, which I thought was a little interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. He's a lazy boyfriend. If this is the first time being at his girlfriend's house, I'm just going to say it. He's a lazy boyfriend. Um, Apparently, her little... I will say it's more likely, you know, since they have the dating band, like, that they would be caught at her place, or, like, people would see him. before that, like, he could have gone to her house. Let's let's be real. That's fair. She's always going over to his house, making herself available to him. She's got to, she's got to like make it harder for this boy. That's all I'm saying. She she makes it too uh-huh. easy. Um, <laughs> apparently, her little sis is also in an idol group, and I was like, how? Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. They kind of give you an explanation <laughs> later, but it's still bullshit. Like, the only thing that I can think is that. I guess Maya's family is very fucking rich. That's the only way that this works. Yeah. So they're apparently half sisters. They share a dad. So the dad basically, like, you know, Maya's mom, like, kicked out Maya, was like, look, I have birthed a child. And then Maya's dad was like, oh, I'm not feeling this anymore. I'm going to go fuck this, like, foreign chick because I think she's hot. And, like, then, uh, the little sister, the little half sister called Nodoka is born. That's that's the whole situation here. Um, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I want to say that like I see another show here. I mean, okay, and their show would be about their bad, uh, their dad. Okay, their dad and his harm. I mean, women who want a child to be a celebrity should be throwing themselves at their dad. The dude's two for two. Uh, <laughs> like I said, my, this- my theory is that the dad is probably rich, right? And so when when they got when Ma and and him, Ma's mom and him got divorced, she got like some money, right? And that's how she's able to afford, you know, like paying all this money so Maya can be a star. Yeah. So, no, but this is the story I want to see. I mean, you could legit have like a halfway believable harm. (laughs) There, there would be an actual reason for these women to want to to be with him, unlike other anime where they just say (laughs) just because. That's true. Because of this, these women would probably be a a little fucking not quite right in the head, like Surumi level not right. (laughs) But that would make the show so good. They're all like plotting against each other. And it's not like your regular soap drama, but it's like like hilariously insane plots that they're trying to do against each other. Oh, man, it'd be great. I'm just imagining like one of those like, oh, no, my my top was ripped open and like just dramatically like exposes like her chest for a second to the guy. Oh, like, <laughs> the, the other like one. these elaborate pranks they're doing to try to sabotage some other woman's child's uh, audition or something like that. I'd be mean, like, you could have a really funny, hilarious. I'm just imagining the pranks of them fighting over him, like make trying to make the, him fall for them. That was my thought. Like yeah. all the catty shit they yeah. could do to each other. Like yeah, how, there's a lot you could do. How like terrible and catty and like slummy these girls could get with each other. They could have like back alley cat fights where they pull each other's hair. <laughs> oh, I love it. I would watch this anime. 
Shark Shark Tank idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so her name is Nodica. They exchange schedules so that they can like live as each other until they can fix this. And Nodica is busier than Mai, apparently, because Mai was like, I want to spend time with my super special boyfriend. Ooh. And so she like cut down her schedule. Um, she's so considerate. Mm, she's she makes it too fucking easy for this boy. <laughs> She balances her work and her life. No, she doesn't balance it. No, that's not the what's happening, Pecom. She she needs okay, to... Okay. Uh, anyway. Later, Nodica asks if Maya's friends won't notice that she's asking differently. And I thought this was hilarious. Sakuda's like, well, but Maya doesn't have any friends, so it's fine. And Maya's just like, yeah, this is true. And she just doesn't give a shit. And I'm like, yeah, girl, not to be embarrassed. But I also thought it was funny. I was like, that's cute. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And then Nodoka's like, oh, I don't have friends either. Because, like, my idol career took off. And this makes me, like, allergic to other people. Because everyone doesn't want to hang out with me. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, and then they, they have, like, this very dramatic story reveal about my and Nodoka's life. And how prideful and competitive their mothers are. And how they're just basically catty bitches who are like, My daughter's better than your daughter. And I'm going to prove it by putting her in this pageant and making her a star. And like, <laughs> they're, they're both yep. bitter about the dad. I just imagine like there being big family events and they both have to go. Like, you know. <laughs> and, and they're both just like looking at each other across the table like snakes. Just like, <laughs> and like. <laughs> just being very very catty and very cliche but um yeah Nodica, and, the, and then Nodica points out like although I'm an idol I'm not super popular so you know it's not like I'm gonna get recognized or anything um and, and it's kind of clear that although Nodica hasn't had much time with her sister like she does kind of idolize her but also like resents her because she's always being compared to her so that's yeah. probably what's caused this whole body switch. Like she's having some sort of complex it's, about my. It's obvious, yeah. Yeah, especially when Futaba points it out. <laughs> yeah, and then there's this scene later, which I don't even know why they did this scene. It just wasted time. Like after school, Nodoka in Maya's body like takes off her stockings and let it's like ooh i'm going to get cool in the water and like goes in the water and then sakuta has to like say some shit about sandwiching his head between her thighs and i'm like all right sakuta just calm <laughs> calm your slow your roll chill just it's okay look i'm just going to say there's an entire anime called Sinai Heroine no Sadate Kata that is built off of girls taking off their stockings and is not a waste of time. I disagree. <laughs> it's well worth my time. I want so, more. There's a movie coming out. I'm going to be at that theater. So b <laughs> anyway. has revealed to us his secret fetish. All right. You've uh-huh. heard it here first. S- send b some stockings in the mail. Just show him your love. <laughs> yes, please. Thank <laughs> some, you. Some worn stockings. Yes. Worn he, stockings. He's going to put them over his face and just inhale deeply, like the pervert he is. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, so anyway, later, Nodoka admits that she doesn't want to go home as Mai, which I, did, I, I didn't really get this. She tells Mai that she's always been compared to her, and and I, I've always, like, resented you, and Mai's like, well, I've resented you, too, because my dad left us and started a family with your mom, and I resent you for this, and I'm like, ooh, this shit's getting real. Um, yeah, it's just family then, drama, you know. Yeah, it's mainly drama. And then, but then, like, instead of Nodoka going home with him, like, Mai goes home with him instead, which is, I'm like, I'm confused. In Nodoka's body, obviously, but well, yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's really Mai. I don't know. Right. You know, it is my. Yeah, I agree. Like, which is a better solution than uh, Nodoka in Mai's body going home with him, I think. Yeah. Uh, It's just weird. Anyway, but I don't know. Sakuta's sister comes to the door and like when she sees yet another bitch in her house, she's like, (laughs) my brother has turned into a gigolo. And I mean, she's not wrong. (laughs) I mean, he does. He does bring a shit ton of girls home. Like, I mean, I yeah. get where she's thinking. Like, they all like, go back to his room. What else is she supposed to think at this point? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'd be like, well, he's nailing all of them, clearly. So, <laughs> um, later Sakata goes to work and Mai goes to eat there so she can see him. And she talks about how she's getting these constant texts from Nodoka's mom, like every like couple minutes about like, don't forget to do this at practice. Like do this, do that. Be good. Overbearing. It's clear. She's like <laughs> suffocating Nodoka. And this is like why Nodoka's having all these issues. Nodoka and Mai's body tries to do her acting work, and it does not go well. Like, Nodoka is clearly just not not able to handle the stress. And starts to have a panic attack from the pressure, and she passes out. And Mai asks Sakuta, like, uh, oh, how dude, did it go later? That scene. Yeah. The scene killed me because they're sitting there, and they're like, oh, what's wrong with her? I'm like, she's fucking ha- clearly having a panic attack, people. You're like, nobody Stop. cares. Like, nobody runs. Not even Sakata. Like, Sakata doesn't even, like, run over to her. He just, like, leaves. And I'm like, Like, the what? camera guys look, and the, and the camera guys, like, looking right at her. I'm like, you... D- it's obvious what's happening here, guys. Well, there's a point, too. <laughs> Let's stop for a minute. Where they're like, well, I guess we should stop recording. Like, all resentful. <laughs> like, oh, this girl passing out and losing consciousness is ruining our day. Let, let's stop recording. <laughs> it, it was funny. But my ass Sakuto about it later. And is surprised at how badly it went, which I guess it's because Mai doesn't realize how fucked up her sister is she kind of should know though because like you don't have adolescent syndrome for some little tiny thing right. uh, <laughs> yeah um and then i there's like a scene where Sakuta's asking another classmate who has like a really amazing like older sister about how it feels and she talks about how you you don't hate the older like person you just resent being compared to them all the time and it gives him a little bit of reference and then there's this weird scene where I guess Mai gives him permission to go to her house again since, like, Nodoka's living in Mai's house as her. Mm-hmm. And Yes, but, go be alone with my little sister in my body. <laughs> in my house where I live alone. Yeah, it was weird. But, like, before she lets him go in there, she's like, to never open the cabinets in the Japanese-style room. Which, like, okay... If you mm-hmm. tell someone, never do this thing, and then hand them a copy of your keys, you know exactly what the fuck is going to happen. Well, that's what <laughs> Mai's hinting at. It could be. That's exactly what I she mean, was hinting was at. Like, too. I'm telling you no, but maybe you should. Yeah, wink, like, because she's not stupid. I was like, well, does she, like, want him to? I, I'm assuming she does, but it's just dumb. It's like, why not just say, it's not like someone's holding her at gunpoint and she's, like, trying to be sneaky. Why not just say, like, you should look in there sometime? Like, I don't know. Yeah. 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 I, I, I would reckon it's just her dildo collection and <laughs> Sakata, Sakata will just, like, sniff on it and that'll, you know, get them by i was gonna ask you guys like what do you think is in these cabinets (laughs) that's a good answer leo i like that (laughs) my thought was like it's a camera and she's testing him to see if she'll if he'll respect her boundaries Ooh, that's smart my thought was it it like was like a child like videos of her that are very embarrassing or something like that but who knows i don't know maybe it's her own little shrine to nodica oh oh that could be it yeah, it could be something. About, yeah. yeah, it could be like all this stuff about how much she loves like Nodoka, like really in reality when she says like she's pissed at her. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was really convenient the way that like Nodoka and Mai are just basically able to like step into each other's lives. Like it's almost nothing because they have like the same career and they have the same skills and they both have no friends. So it's just like, oh, it's so perfect. We can both just yeah. easily step I mean, in. I was going to say, it, kind of, it does kind of make sense. Yeah. how they, Especially for Mai, since she has the more experience, it's probably almost nothing for her to do Nodoka's job. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's part of the point probably is that like, oh, we're so similar, even though we think we're so different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess like standing, being in each other's bodies for like a little bit is going to help them realize that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I like they just need to see their lives from the other person's perspective for a little bit, so they can come to uh, you know an accord. They can come together again. That's all. 
But yep. yeah, I am I'm waiting for Sakata to sleep with Mai in his sister's body, in her sister's body. Uh cuz that would be the thing that Cat would just like rage quit the show. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm so just excited. waiting. I'm just waiting for when Nodoka just creepily falls for him and then is like, "Ooh, but I have Mai's body. So you want to fuck me, right?" <laughs> I mean, That's either I way, like one happen. of those things is totally going to happen. I can't wait. <sighs> oh. But uh, I think we could wait for a little bit while we take a short break. Yeah. All right, then. Warning the following clip may contain descriptions of explicit behavior conducted by Bishi Boys. Now, that's not to say he didn't get physical. Quite the opposite, in fact. Our boy Kent was researching all the ways to please a woman. Pull this lever. And he put some <laughs> of that learning into effect, if you know what I mean. Let me give you a scene from the show that I really quite liked. My research shows that women find it pleasurable if men place their fingers here, then apply some pressure and begin to rub that area. <laughs> Do you enjoy that? Is it giving you pleasure? Please respond. I need verbal. <laughs> <laughs> Please respond. <laughs> I gotta get this out. I gotta get this out. Get it out. Please respond. I need verbal confirmation that this is something that you enjoy. <laughs> Heroin Sadi tells him that it's hurting her as he's rubbing her too vigorously. Ow. Despondent Ken removes his fingers and looks at them. Perhaps I applied too much pressure. Don't worry, Kent. Head pats are difficult to master. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Yata from the Reanimator Pod. If you want to hear more, you can check out our website. That's R E N M A T O R P O D dot com. We release new episodes every Monday. Don't drop that. Hey, don't drop that. And here's another tasty morsel from the Trash Pandas Watch Anime Podcast. Some, some fan service. Yeah. I mean, it worked pretty well in Dragon Ball. Do you remember those scenes with Bulma? Bulma was running around in a bunny outfit for the longest time. I know. Akira Toriyama. We can get the Dragon Balls, (laughs) and then we can make our wish. Bulma's panties. (laughs) (laughs) Did Oolong wish for Bulma's panties, or did he just wish for a pair of panties? I think it was just a pair of panties. I'm sure it's different in the Japanese than it is in the English dub, but... Yeah, he just wished for panties. They're probably used. As always, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter at Trash Panda Anime. You can find us on our website, tpwapodcast.com. You can also find us on assorted sites like SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. Hi, I'm JD, your host of the Red Leaf Retrocast, your best location to learn, remember, and relive the past to the present. Our podcast has four shows for you to listen to between retro gaming, modern gaming, anime, and even wrestling. The Retro Gaming Cast covers discussion topics, and each episode we discuss retro games picked based on a decided theme for that episode, ranging from space all the way to console specials like the old handheld Game Boy. Our Modern Gaming Cast is monthly and covers video game titles that were released in that previous month. Each anime cast, we focus to review a retro anime each and every episode, like the original Mobile Suit Gundam to the racing hit Initial D. But that's not all. We also keep up with the seasonal shows, by occasionally doing impressions and reviews as well. Finally, our last show is about wrestling, where we keep the rising indie scene up to date, while also covering shows from the bigger promotions like Ring of Honor, New Japan, and WWE, so we cover it all. We also cover a retired wrestler every episode in what we call the Wrestler Spotlight and are currently on a quest covering old WCW Thunder episodes from the late 90s, every cast. So if any one of those casts sound like something you'd like to check out, that's the Red Leaf Retrocast Gaming, Anime, and Wrestling, found at iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and all your favorite podcasting sites. Also, you can learn, remember, and relive the past to the present. We can't wait to see you soon. And I'm back, and I'm outside of Leo's apartment, and he has got terrible <laughs> ventilation, let me tell you. I'm just here on this ladder, 
I'm stringing up his Christmas lights, <laughs> and we're gonna watch Banana Fish together. Okay, he, he, he needs he say. needs a real man like you become. Well, yeah, yeah, like he needs to not stop looking past me to some puny boy like Ag. He needs a real man, <laughs> Ash Lynx. Yeah. That's me. Oh, well, the, well, the I pair, think, well, thank the you, Joe. Of, the pairing of the <laughs> podcast has been confirmed, y'all. Like, start writing uh. your uh, Yaoi now. Oh no! <laughs> Do not encourage that. Cat. <laughs> I but, just can't wait. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, there's a little meme out there called "Good Morning Julia." YouTube it and watch the video, and you'll get what he's talking about. <laughs> and it's Hopefully. I I love that meme. It's so good. So, anyways. <clears throat> Ash wakes up and goes to the roof to find A.G. Uh, Ash admits that <laughs> Blanca is his former teacher, and it's scary now that he works for yet long. Then, then like, Singh comes stumbling around the corner and passes out. And when he wakes up, he tells Ash yet long is holding his gang captive, and he will kill them unless he goes back. Ash tells Singh to stay here, and then he goes to, like, plan things while they wait to find out where they are. I don't think he told Singh not to go with him, though. That's how it kind of comes across. I think he's just telling him to rest for a minute here. Uh, mm-hmm. Yet Long, meanwhile, kills like one of the guys. He just shoots him blank in the head, and he kind of tries to get Lao mad at Ash since he was Shorter's like best friend, right hand man at the time. But Lao, he he says he hates Yet Long more because uh, man, why do he say he hates Yet Long more? Oh, because he's like being skeezy and working with Dino and going behind everybody's back and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, and then Ash, then they find out the location. So Ash and everybody go. It's a small group. If you freeze frame it's seven people okay but i had a problem here all right like this doorman needs to be fucking fired like i mean he's probably dead but like he opens like the little shutter and he looks in the hallway i'm assuming i'm gonna assume all he saw was ash's face because like when he opens the door ash is right in the middle no he they have uh one of their guys and they throw him down real quick so that's oh, what he saw. Oh, so that's it's, what it was. It's literally a blink. You miss it. Like I had to go back, freeze the frame, and then I caught it. I was like, "Holy shit!" You're right. I did. I do remember seeing that guy like down on his knees in front of Ash. Like, okay, so that makes sense. But like, still, like they're like they're all the way. They're in that hallway, like all the way back. Like this guy needed to take <laughs> more than just like a glance. He's very bad at his job, and like he gets his like whole group killed because yeah, of it. I think, what, he didn't have the signal. Like he does the double wink real quick. You're like, yeah, like, uh, you know, they've got me or something, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. they end up saving everybody that's there. And like Dino and Yut Lung are actually watching us with these cameras. And they also have a guy by Colonel Fox with them who has apparently been hired by Dino to capture Ash. He says something like as long as he comes back with his head intact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which head is he talking about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never know with this show. Uh, God. So Ash goes back to that place he rented with like Max. I believe that's where he was. And he does something on a computer, just something to do something, I guess. And then, like, Max shows up. And Max wants Ash to help to infiltrate, like, a gay bar that a man named Frog has a penthouse on top of. And apparently Frog was doing the same thing as Dino and, like, taking pictures of his child rapist customers. But was making, like, a side business of blackmailing with it. Uh, They infiltrate, and there's, like, a couple funny gags. And, like, there was, like, this one where, like, Max is, like, so put out. He's, like, he grabbed my butt. <laughs> then, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and then he's, like, like. Now I know what it feels like to be a woman. Yeah, and it's, like, oh, it <laughs> sucks. And I'm, like, yeah. It's only been, like, all of our lives, dude. Don't whine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. And then, and then like, Max gets up briefly, goes to the bathroom. And that's when, like, Colonel Fox walks up. And he, like, asks Ash, you know. And I buy you a drink. He's like, oh, no, I'm with somebody else. And then he just leaves. Uh, then Frog shows up and he's they get, they're like, he looks like a frog. And sure, he looks like a frog. And then like he goes up to his penthouse and they go up behind him and they ambush him and get the photos. And he also has like ones of when Ash was just a boy. And at like the memory, Ash like almost loses it and shoots him. But Max like he's like gets him back to reality. Uh, so they meet up with uh man. I forgot his name. It's in here somewhere. But, like, they get the information they need. I think they're trying to take him down some other way or another like that. And mm-hmm. then Max, like, ends up burning the photos in the end because Ash is like, don't use everybody else's photos, but you can use mine. But then Ash bur- but then Max burns them all, and he's like, nah, this is all fucking garbage. Uh, but then after they had left, Fox visits Frog right after. And then, like, it's just a news the next morning that 
that frog's dismembered arm is like found in a dumpster the next day. Oh. I mean, you, you missed the part where they talk about like Ash gets really up close and personal again, kind of like that scene before in like one of the previous episodes, and he's like, "Yeah, I just remember the click, click, click sound." While you were raping me oh, and yeah. taking pictures and all, and it was really yeah. intense and everything. I, I just didn't go into detail about that, but like, yeah, it really started fucking with him. We almost shot him. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh shit, this is getting real again. <laughs> like, banana fish isn't afraid to get real sometimes. No. Uh, so Ash is like talking to Kane about how easy it was to get Singh's men back, and he feels like something else is going on. This doesn't make completely complete sense, and they both get a little suspicious about the Chinese people that were captured. And mm-hmm. that's when like suddenly two of Kane's men get shot by Dino's guys. And this killed me. The two shot, <laughs> the two people who are shot once called killer B. That was okay. Uh, the, the other one was called yeah. Harlem chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Harlem chicken. Oh, Japan. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn it, Japan. <laughs> I'm like some weird level. I feel like I should be offended for the, like, cause it's a yeah. black gang. I don't know. Harlem. <laughs> just a bit. It's like, it's like oh, I'm God. just imagining a bunch of Japanese people in a room trying to think like what a a black gang name would be, and this is like the best that they can come up with. <laughs> They're like, I don't know. What what are some words oh, okay, we can just put a quick together? Theory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So th- okay, I- I'm thinking this was their thought logic. So they're thinking, all right, black gangs. Harlem, Har- uh, Harlem, New York. Okay, mm-hmm. and then their gangs, and especially Saki from Zombie uh, Land, <laughs> really like chicken. <laughs> yeah, so that's where the name came from, no, Harlem I, Chicken. I, I, I was imagining it had something to do with like the stereotype of like, oh, they like chicken. And I was like, that's terrible. And then also they're like, oh, g- you know what? Anime has a black character in it. You know what that character is called? Killer Bee. Let's put that in there too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so, it's bad. Uh, they go and they yeah it's bad they investigate the like the scene of one of the shootings and apparently that was just a setup yeah so some guys show up and start shooting at them and just about everybody gets taken out except for ash and kane and then they suddenly stop getting shot at and basically it's because fox is like he's just playing with them he wants to make a game out of it ash also comes also calls some like Shady guy? Has he been in the show before? He's like a pimp or something. Uh, I don't remember him. Is it a pimp uh, named Slickback? Well, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't remember who he calls. Shoot, I, I wish I remembered. It was um, some pimp dude. I don't know. He like talked to him briefly, and basically the pimp was whoever he was. That's how he was dressed. Was able to find out that like you know, is there some new people in town? What's going on? He finds out that like the fox, they're French mercenaries that Dino hired. And so they rush back to find like one of Kane's guys dead, and he was armless in that back alley, right? Like his arms were missing. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. I so, feel like at this point, there's too many things going on, and it's too complicated for anyone to keep track. You would have to like write a ju- like dedicate a, a wall in your house to this anime, <laughs> and like <laughs> as plot points are and have to write like connections and like write yourself no no one's gonna do that it's confusing oh, i believe you you should have tried to summarize this fucking episode <laughs> i know i felt i felt bad for you as i was, I was almost writing in my notes like good luck leo <laughs> yeah, much. um so whatever reason this suddenly makes ash think he needs to go find robert that's the guy's name Robert and Max, like, they're in trouble. I don't know how he came to that conclusion immediately, but he did. Mm-hmm. And then Max, and then you see, like, Max gets to the apartment, and he's, like, knocking on it, but there's no answer. So he opens the door, immediately gets shot in the arm, and tries to run away. But then, luckily, Ash shows up to save him and Robert, because, you know, he's, he's like, the best shooter in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then after, like, a long time, Jessica just shows up. Yeah, I, yeah, don't know I guess they sent word reason? to her that stuff was going on, and she's like, "Well, I need to be with Max." And I was like, "Okay, but you hate him." <laughs> but then later in the episode, she's like, "I love him," and like runs after him. him. <laughs> and I'm like, "You and guys like, have a terrible relationship. If you ever have a relationship like that with someone, you should just be like, no, we need to not see each other.'" <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, she's so like great. carrying a gun now too. She's like. 
She's like part of the action squad. I'm like, okay, I guess. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. So, and like they try to make a like a kind of comedic because like as soon as she walks in there, she's like, oh, hi, Ag, how are you doing? Oh, yes, you're wonderful. And then like immediately starts fighting with Max. I like that actually. It's like, oh, hi, Ag. It was pretty so, cute. So yeah, and then like Ag and Ash sit down, and Ash is trying to figure out what's going on, and then Ag he says something like, you know what. What would be your weak points and looking at it from their point of view and then and then Ash is suddenly like, Oh, I think I figured it out. They would disrupt the chain of command to find out where I am and see huh. what how things go down. And I'm just I'm like, okay, there's probably some logic behind it, but I'm not gonna think about it too much. <laughs> yeah. So they make their plan and then they engage with Fox's forces and like AG and Jessica was supposed to escape a Sings group, but then like this is when Jessica's like, but I still love him. I have to go back. And then she <laughs> goes back and Aji's like, I'm supposed to protect her. And I love Ash too. And he goes after him and sings like, I promised Ash I would protect them. <sighs> and then he goes after them. I'm just like, this scene sucks. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was just and thinking then, but, like, you have a kid, you dumb bitch. Like, <laughs> you have it's to okay. stay He's alive. with her sister. Well, but, but then like, yeah. Lau and them are like, they're like whispering with the other guys and they're like, Ash is in here right now. Let's do that thing. And then we don't, we don't know what the thing was. Was, was he going to betray them? Was he going to try to talk to him? I, we don't have any idea at this point. Yeah. And then like the other guys are having this gun battle and it's going on and like Ash gets separated from them. But then the uh, pink haired dude like takes a bullet to the army goes down and then they all get surrounded and then they specifically like hold Max hostage until Ash should come out of the building and he comes out of the building and Fox guys like, Oh, we finally meet Mr. What's his name? What's he called him? Like, Leopard or something? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, yeah. But also, yeah, I, Links, I'm sorry, Ash Links. Keep, Ash Links. Oh, Mr. Why Links. Does, yeah, sorry. Why yeah, does yeah. Ash keep falling for this bullshit? He knows better than to, to fall for this? Like, the hostage thing? Like, they're going to kill them yeah, anyway. Th- this is... There's been this repeat, repeating thing of Ash escapes. He gets captured through like some type of hostage thing, and then he escapes again. And then yeah. they just keep repeating it. It's just like this unending cycle. It's like, come on, like think of something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If uh, only Ag had killed Dino in that stupid hotel party, he had to close his eyes and miss. It would have been done. <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody else who would have stepped up and been like, "We got to get Ash back." No, I, no, nobody else is obsessed with his dick as much as I am. <laughs> <sighs> so, and I also okay when these like Corsican like mercenaries are fighting, like okay, so there's a scene earlier where they're like Ash is on his phone. I guess he's like double checking the fingerprints he got from some of them or something, and like he figures out that they are ex like m- like corsican like french like officers like soldiers in the military uh who were in like afghanistan and everything uh and they're all like Kaf-Ganistan. they're trained in <laughs> urban warfare right and so but like they're clearly not because like all they do is just like fire a lot of machine gun bullets oh yeah, yeah I thought they, if you if you if any <laughs> second try to break it down they no, no. They're not like, doing they would be using flashbangs and like operating like a squad and like breaching and clearing and like no, they're not doing any of that. Just they're just not firing, firing hails of bullets blindly into doorways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the other weird things is like so when Ash is looking at his phone and he sees like he sees Edward L. Fox is the <sighs> name of this colonel. And then for some for some reason the Amazon translator was like even with the Edward L Fox thing on screen has Ash say Eduardo Fox. <laughs> I was like I guess oh maybe in Japanese it's when you say Eduardo L Fox it sounds like Eduardo Fox. <laughs> but well, it was just they, like the funniest thing. Did they change thing. what Blanca called Dino too? A little I think a little they bit. may have, yeah. Yeah, there was something else they did. Oh, and by the way, like, yes, the title of this episode does refer to another book. Uh, it's The Undefeated is a short story by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, but I couldn't figure out the connection with this one immediately. I, mean, I think it's just like a cool name for this episode, basically, because like it's about this like washed up bullfighter named Manuel Garcia, 
who's trying to like beg a promoter for like one last bull fight and he he eventually defeats the bull but like not without getting nearly killed himself so i guess it kind of fits but like not really i don't know uh i think they're just like throwing in every title they can think of now at the end well they're getting towards the end so they're probably running out of ideas <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so let's move on to this next episode cat you How need to read the title of this next Zombieland episode. In All one right. breath. One breath. How about them zombies? Breath. How about that? How about them zombies? Let's, let's do it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Though my life may have ended once by some twist of fate, I have risen, and if song and dance are to be my fate, then carrying the memories of my comrades in my heart as I sally forth shall be my saga. Oh, fuck! <laughs> nice. Okay. Episode Which nine. Is the stupidest fucking name for a fucking episode ever! <laughs> it's a great name. They Shame. clearly did it to be funny. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I don't Oh, God, I don't it reminds it. me of those episode titles from uh, A Centaur's Life. You remember those, Becom? Oh, yeah. God, God, those were so good. Those were, no, they were awful. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them well. <sighs> all right okay. Kat, tell us about this Saki so, episode the beginning of this episode it's just a flashback of Saki when she was alive and she was in her gang and she's got this like best friend named Reiko and apparently she just oh. they just finished like beating to a pulp like a bunch of fucking so girls hot. oh I know Reiko <laughs> is hot like Reiko's hair when she was young I'm like oh god I need me a piece of this this girl is fine no, wait I'm curious though this is is Leo attracted to young Reiko or older Reiko? Both. Both, Both are hot as okay. fuck. Let's be real. All right. I'm just, okay. I have I have a point to make about this later, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, as far as waifu, waifus go, she's one of my favorite kinds, but I'll, I'll, we'll get to know her more before I say it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but then they race down the mode in their motorbikes, and it's all very like, we are the badasses. Um, and then it shoots back to the present. And the manager has made them participate in this, like, they call it like a Kashima dance, which is apparently, like, only old people go to it. And he's like, you need to make <laughs> old people your fans, because Saga is full of <laughs> old people. And it's like, I, I don't know if that works that way. Like, uh, old people don't usually like idol groups, dude. Um, so, <laughs> some girl is upset by this. And later it comes up with a, up to them with, like, two other, like, middle school bitches on mopeds. And they, like, come up very, like, menacingly. Like, they're going to do some shit. But, like... It's awesome. But they're not going <laughs> to do shit. Because one of the girls... One of the girls is totally sign. She's got the twin tail pigtails in the glasses. Like, they, they walk <laughs> up, like, the... all slow. Like, they're going to they're gonna wreck these bitches. And it's like, you're not going to do anything. Like, sit down. And even Lily It's comments, really funny. <laughs> Like Lily yeah, it's Thomas, really funny because like, their slow lame. motion walk is oh, it's super smoothly animated too. Like it's like better animated yeah. than most of the show. It's funny. <laughs> the slow motion walk <laughs> is pretty good, and even Lily comments like, "This is lame." <laughs> like it's great. Um, so I guess they're middle school, and I kept thinking like, "Why? Why are they doing it with mopeds?" And then I was like, "Oh, they're probably they probably can't get real motorbikes yet because they're in middle school, like age restrictions." <laughs> um. But yeah, Ty, Ty like bites the main bitch as she's trying to intimidate Lily and Sakura, and then Saki comes she's up. She's gnawing at- on her bun specifically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then as as like th- this has happened, Saki comes up and is like, uh, and basically we find out the 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 like main girl is called Maria, and Saki gives them like that gangsta look, like you want to fucking mess <laughs> with me, bitches, and like. They're like, oh, no, we don't want to mess with you. And, like, as they're walking away, Saki notices that her coat, like, signifies that she's in a gang called Dor- Dorami, which is also called Mad mm-hmm. Demon Beauties. And this is the game, sh- the <laughs> gang she used to be in. And as they drive oh, off... Oh, it, it also says, like, fifth leader or something like that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. something like that. Yeah. And then as they drive off, Maria yells that this park is Dorami territory. And I'm like, you guys are middle in middle school. You can't hold shit, honey. Um, <laughs> and then later, Maria's two friends are like, maybe we should just quit the gang. Maybe we should just let it go. It's too much. It's too much. And then you learn that Maria's mom was also in the gang and was the first boss. 
And Maria's like, don't fucking bring my mom up. Don't talk about her to me. And um, at this point, Kurosuke, another group, also called like Murder Girls, because that's what their name translates to, uh, later (laughs) comes up to them. And like Misa, the leader of Kurosuke, threatens that she will shut down Dorami for good. And it's clear there's going to be like some showdown right now. Um, Meanwhile, the girls like are all in the van after they've just gone to that dance and they're all like driving down the road like squid is being eaten <laughs> the manager is screaming it's all just a day in the life and Saki <laughs> sees this fight going down outside the window and she's like it's going down for real and she like has to be a part of it <laughs> so she like opens the the door of the van and just jumps out the moving van and I'm like okay and she breaks her neck like really bad and has to fix it. Well, I I will say she had her motivation is she recognized that uh that girl Maria as almost definitely being her old friend's daughter. Well, but let's which be is, honest, like, she saw like a fight about to go down and was like, "Oh no, I got to be a part of this. I got to see what's going down." No, like, I know. didn't get that at all cuz if you really look at her like you see her show like serious concern a lot in this episode. I mean, later she does, but right now she doesn't really know a ton. She just knows that, like, something... I don't think she, yeah, I don't think she knows that it's uh, Reiko's daughter or anything. I but think she, she knows just... it's her old gang. Though. Yeah, she, she knows, knows it's her old gang. gang. She, she looks that. outmatched. Yeah, yeah. so she's and like, then oh, she I wants help. to be a part. Yeah. But the way, yeah. but the way she acts towards her really makes you think she has a pretty good hunch of who this girl is. Could be. I don't know. Maybe that's what I got from it. But yeah, so she has to fix her, fix her neck so that she doesn't look like a crazy, like, zombie, which is what she is. Um, and just as Saki is, like, going to introduce herself to this, like, spread out group of girls who is about to fight, the poor recurring policeman guy shows up again. And I love him every time he fucking comes on. He is so epic. Yep. He's amazing. I don't know. I don't understand why all policemen can't be like this policeman. Um... <laughs> Oh, we'd be run over with anarchy. It'd be awful. Yeah, it would be amazing. It would it would be much more cute and hilarious. There wouldn't be shootouts between policemen and, and people. It would just be a load of laughs. And at least that's better than what we got right now. Um, so if you're like, what are you girls doing down there? I'm going to call for backup. And it's like, I, I think you know what they're doing. It's pretty obvious. And then they're like, oh, shit, the guy's here. We got to go. And so the gang kind of drives up, uh, drives off, since the fight's not going to happen now. And Saki basically tells tells Maria, like, you don't stand a chance against Misa and this Kurosuke gang. Like, you're going to get fucked if you try this. And Saki seems to have grasped that Maria's mom is her old partner, Reiko, at this point. Like, I think she puts it together now. And she asks about her, but Maria's like, don't talk to me about that spineless whip, bitch. No. And like storms off. And then when Maria comes home, um, Reiko is waiting, her mom. And she just found this challenge in the mail from Kurosuke and tries to confront her about it, but ends up apologizing to Maria instead. And then Maria's like, this is why I hate you, mom. And like goes to her room. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I get the point. Like that is irritating. (laughs) But also, like, <laughs> to stop being a shit to your mom. But, I mean, who, who hasn't been a shit to their mom at some point in their life? So, I guess uh, I get that's it. That's regular, just teenage shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, so the manager is pissed that Saki tried to interact with the gang. Like, he catches up to her eventually and is like, what were you doing? Jumping out the wind, like, the van door and all this shit. Like, your actions could be the end of the group. And it's like, well, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong <laughs> um <laughs> and then later Saki's Saki's friend Reiko is thinking about how much she has changed as a person over the years and how she's morphed into this weak mom role and what Saki would think of her now if she saw her and she like has a picture of them when they were young and it's interesting um there's another flashback at this point Saki and her are talking about like, what they want to do in the future. And Saki says, like, oh, I just want to, like, take over more and more territory and eventually, like, take over the world! And I'm like, okay. Um, (laughs) Okay, Saki. (laughs) 
It, but um, Rico is like, I just want to get married and have a family since my family is divorced. And I'm just like, well, okay. Well, no, that seems a little weird for someone who's a gang member, also, but whatever. Also, by the way, did you see the hair on that girl who was like their rival? It was like 10 feet tall. It was ridiculous. It looked like a huge giant like cross or something. It was amazing. Not, like upside down cross. I saw her <laughs> hair, Reiko's hair, and I was like, I love her hair. Yeah. I want to touch her hair. Her hair's great. Yeah. Yes. The other girl's hair, I was like, Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the showdown, we find out it's going to happen at midnight at the Kagamiyama Bridge. And it's clear that some sort of tragedy happened there before. It shows, like, Saki racing and falling off the bridge and, like, exploding and burning to death. Um, the two are going to use the same rule as Saki and the other girl before her did, apparently. And they're going to play this game of chicken and see who stops first before the edge of the bridge. And I guess before, like, Saki never stopped, and so she just went over. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which sucks. Um, just as they're about to start, Maria's mom shows up on her motorbike, and she's like, please don't do this, no! And Maria's pissed off, and she's like, why are you begging this bitch to, to stop it? Like, stop being a weak, weak little, like, bitch, and... And she's like, I don't want to be like you, mom, blah, blah. And then suddenly Saki gets there, too. And she can't stop. And she skids into a bunch of bikes with her, like, re- bike. <laughs> Not, like, motorbike, but, like, bike. And all I could think in that moment was, and you never learned to fucking stop. Like, you fell off the edge of the bridge because you can't fucking stop. <laughs> Here you are again. You never learned to stop, did you, Saki? Like... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I also saying. want to note, like, the other girls were, like, impressed by her mom's motorcycle. They're like, damn, that thing's actually kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. But, yeah, so she she gets off the bike and is like, I'm going to be Dorami's captain for a day. And she's like, I'm going to do the race. Because she's like, I'm a zombie and I can't fucking die. So... At this point, I was a little irritated because, first of all, Reiko doesn't recognize Saki right away. She would recognize her. Yeah. <laughs> she would fucking recognize her. We we brought this up before in the show. There seems to be like something that doesn't let people in this show it's really anime recognize magic. people. That's what it is. It's yeah. anime magic. Well, just like uh, uh just like uh, Lily's father, like he wasn't so sure himself. At it's first. like you well, would be sure. Yeah. It, it's your child. You would know. Yeah. But they would but, also be like, well, if she was alive, she would be this many years older. So why does she look exactly like well, she did? It must be another person type thing. No, That's my only explanation for it. You would but still. Yeah. I mean, if they, I don't know. It's bullshit. But, <laughs> but then Saki's like, I do not know of what you speak when she finally does recognize her when it takes way too long. And then she buys it immediately. Saki's just like, I don't know what you mean. And she's like, I buy this. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. And then once again, Saki goes off the side of the cliff and it's all very deja vu and like it explodes and it's all dramatic. But this time, however, Saki's able to climb back up onto the bridge and is like, oh, I'm not even hurt. This isn't even my final form. And, like, apologizes, apologizes for wrecking Reiko's bike. And Reiko That's basically... That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, Reiko basically goes up to Saki and, like, punches her in the face and is like, what were you gonna do if it didn't turn out? And Saki tells Maria, like, see, your mom isn't a weakless, spineless bitch. Like, you just gotta show her that you've got enough guts to handle yourself. And then but that also showed like Reiko's frustration with Saki coming out, though, like the old Saki that she remembers, like she punches this girl who she thinks is Saki, but like is saying like, oh, I'm not because like she did the exact same thing and she wishes she had done this to her friend way back when basically Probably, knock some yeah. sense into her. Um, but yeah, then Saki like gets up on a trash can or something. I don't even know. She stands up on something. And claim she's gonna like show them what a real legend is because this gang shit ain't nothing. And I'm like, okay. And then suddenly everyone is at a dance concert. And I'm like, how did they get <laughs> from this parking lot in the middle of the night to a concert? Doesn't make well, sense. There, there Anime is magic. a clip of Kotaru watching all this from the van. 
So like yeah. he kind of pre-planned this happening. Did he pre-plan magically a concert appearing around them? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit and you know it, Leo. But we'll let it go because anime magic. And the the dance scene with Saki as the lead at the end is really epic. It's just a little like, what the fuck? Like, it's just random. Yeah. But it is epic. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and actually, like, Yugiri's episode is next. I'm super psyched for that one. Actually, more so than this one. Because we haven't seen much yeah. from Yugiri at all. Like, they barely ever touch on her. And I think yeah, it could be than, really interesting. Yeah, other than Ty, they touched mostly on everybody else. Exactly. Yeah, part. pretty much. So yeah, she's basically I, the last. You could argue Sakura. She hasn't had much backstory, but it's kind of started with her backstory. And it's obviously yeah. going to end with her. So yeah, she's the so, big mystery. I, yeah. I, I want to say Reiko is like my favorite type of waifu. It's the one that was like the former gang or leader or boss, but like is now like you you thought was the docile wife, but really she has this past that would like fucking scare the socks off you. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I like knowing that like they you they, like just knowing that your wife could be a total badass if she needed to be is just I don't know, just like this gr- amazing thought to me. And this is exactly what Trigger and A1 Pictures were doing with Darling and the Franks and Zero Two. It's exactly well, that. That's it. It's like, oh, you tamed the wife. The food. thing with she's her a beast is she, she lacks needs to be, but she's she domesticated lacks the amount now. Of experience, <laughs> which is a big difference to me. I want yeah. her to have, you know, aged. I want her to be, you know, uh, twenty-five, thirty, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so like even run, young Reiki is awesome. Like Cat said, her hair is fucking. Li- I love that fucking hairstyle. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about that color scheme, but it is fucking awesome. It's epic. <laughs> it was very cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I got like really into like so uh, like lots of other like delinquent or yakuza type anime. This like symbol kept popping up throughout the whole episode with the like, exclamation like point and like the question mark, which is called the Intero Bang. By the way, it's a freaking awesome name for a symbol. And I kept trying to Google, like, what the hell the origins of this symbol were as, like, a way to represent, like, Yakuza stuff in anime. Because I'd also seen it recently when I was watching uh, Saiki Kusuo no Sainan. It shows up there, too, when they're doing, like, delinquent stuff. And I've definitely seen it in other anime. I assume it's from, like, old Yakuza movies or gangster movies from Japan or something. But if anybody knows, like, shoot me a message. Because I was trying to research that today. I just could not find... Well, anything that makes it. a little sense with Saki's backstory. Oh yeah, it totally makes sense. Like I, I assume that's where it's from, but I just don't know which one like popularized it. Um, I also just want to say I don't think this episode functioned as well as like a Zombie Land Saga episode as some of like the other episodes. Like especially when I compare it to Lily's episode last episode, where she has all this drama like in her past backstory, but then like the group is the one who like helps her like get over it. Uh, and it's like because she's a member of like Zombie Land Saga that like she gets through it. Whereas, yeah, but like, she's the leader. She can do it herself. And also her background, yeah. unlike everybody else we've seen so far, is not in the entertainment industry. Yeah, that's so true. It's not. It she's not involved with really, idols. Yeah, it'd be a lot different than everybody else's backstory completely. I just wanted like the girls to somehow be involved besides just like throwing a song at the end of the episode. Um, I feel like they missed some opportunities. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, the girls are kind of involved. Like, Ty bites Maria in the beginning, but that's basically it. They're gone well, for the rest also, of the episode. In Saki's case, she's really out of everybody. She has her shit together the most of everybody. That's true. Yeah, she's more confident. Yeah, once, once she was like, all right, it was like early, very early on. She's like, all right, I want to be the leader. And if we're going to do this, we're really going to fucking do this. And once that was solidified, like, yeah, she was like, she's been the most committed so far. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, let's move on to Car Blood Curry shed. Circus. Oh, boy. I said Bloodshed. <laughs> bloodshed, yeah. yes. Bloodshed the anime. Silver, uh, silver Bloodshed the anime. <laughs> uh, people who look like other people, the anime. Uh, <laughs> episode 9, Memories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so after the plane crash at the end of last episode, the circus recovered Gee 
Yes, his name is Guy. Now that I'm doing the synopsis, I'll pronounce his name right again. Uh, <laughs> even though Cat and Leo forgot the last two weeks. From the wreckage, uh, I'm Shiragane pretty sure rec- you told me Guy. <laughs> I it's definitely not, said they Guy. They say Guy. They say Guy. No, they don't. They say Guy. They do. They do, though. <laughs> they absolutely do not. Oh they say Guy. 100%. We even had like a whole joke about how ghee is good for cooking, and you can find it in Indiana. Well, but we, but and then we your still guys are like, disagreed eh, it's, it's, about it's if, if they were saying guy or if they were saying ghee. They're saying ghee. You know what? 100%. I'm gonna record snippets of this and be like, Do "Look, it. bitch, <laughs> they said guy." It's gonna be epic. I would love to see one point when they messed up and said guy because they say ghee every other time. Oh my god. Um. Okay. So Shiragani recognizes Gi and starts uh-huh. calling him Sensei like immediately. Now I'm and just imagining Gi this character rec- <laughs> as a giant tub of butter. I hope you know this. I hope you. I mean, wouldn't he be better looking that way? Like, <laughs> I think so. Honestly. Nice. Uh, and Gi like remembers Shiragani as Eleonor, which we remember is like her old name. Um, and so Shiragane explains to Masaru that Gi was her teacher. Her earliest memory is of traveling with him to Kiberon, France, where I just pronounced France so pretentiously. France. Where, she's, where she studied to become a You were too caught up in handler. saying Gi. Now you're pronouncing everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> where she studied to become a puppet handler under Lucille and um, Masaru is surprised that Shiragane is like fond of Gi because he thought that Narumi was like the first person to ever show her kindness and so then Shiragane like gives Masaru a very breasty hug just like puts his face mm-hmm. right in there she's like can you hear my heart beating this is because you showed me how to love and I-, I love Narumi and he still lives on inside of you Masaru it was very cute. And Master's like, I like you too. Um, <laughs> I also like your breasts, yeah. which are pressed against my face. That's what oh, he boy. says. <sighs> so that night, Masaru wakes from a nightmare of like holding Narumi's severed arm in his hands, uh, which is obviously still bothering him. And he then decides that he needs to know why his father left his inheritance to him. And he needs to face his past and be a strong person. So he makes the dumb decision, uh, sorry, decision of just Desertion. leaving the circuit. Now like, he's, he can't I, talk. He, I know. He's talk. fucking everything he's up. He's fucking everything up because oh, he's boy. fucking the gee up. <laughs> fucking gee. <laughs> fucking gee. So he leaves the circus alone and uh, the gee actually sees him leaving. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty dumb decision for him to just leave on his own like a little boy. Almost but, as dumb as calling this guy gee. Jeez. Almost as dumb as that. I agree. <laughs> like almost as dumb. Uh, come on, French people. It's clearly guy. Uh, mm-hmm. So meanwhile, Narami is trekking deep into the mountains of China with Lucille, trying to track down the Midnight Circus. By the way, this feels. This whole part feels like it's moving way too fast and skipping yeah. manga chapters left and right. I felt like that um, too. I was like, wait, what's happening? What? I was so yeah. confused. <laughs> Like, all of a sudden, they've gone to this, like, Master Liang's village in China who um, Narami studied with to learn martial arts. But they, they've already left, and they already have their his daughter with them, Ming Sha. And, like, apparently the Master Liang came down with Zonfa, and he's, like, seeking this spring of immortality, and they find him there. And Narami starts... He's been having these weird dreams that are kind of, like, memories... Involving a girl who looks a lot like Shirogane named Francine. A lot? Exactly it's like Shirogane. Exactly, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, in the fucking flashback. Oh, it pissed yes. me off. Because he looks exactly like Norami. You can't have a yep. flashback with the, the characters <laughs> that look exactly like the main fucking characters of the show. And not expect us to get confused as fuck. What is happening? You're supposed, you're supposed to at least change your profile or like hairstyle or something. <laughs> I, I, so we have uh, these character like uh, image cheat sheets in our Google Docs so, so we can like uh, picture the characters in our head. And I laughed so hard when I was adding Francine and Yin Bai to this chart because it's literally just adding Narumi and Shiragane to the chart again. Again. <laughs> again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, they um, he has this flashback. He also says he's been having these dreams because of the aquavite that he ingested because apparently the person who made it 
uh, his soul is dissolved in the liquid, and so it's now inside him, and so he has this man's memories. What would it feel um, like to have your soul dissolved and consumed by another person? Uh, sounds pretty sexy to me. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's an odd concept. I thought about this a lot. I was like, what the fuck? That's so Obviously, because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't even know what that would feel like because I don't know what my soul feels like. So I'm, I'm not just sure. imagining someone you being like, no it, feels, "It feels so tingly, so warm." <laughs> <laughs> so they go to in this flashback. They, so they find Master Long Liang, and then he tells them about his ancestor who created the Aqua Vitae, and he tells them about like these Bai brothers, Yin, who's the oldest, and Jin, who's the youngest, and. They were these puppet masters from China who set out to try and find ways to, like, actually make puppets move with alchemy. And so they end up in Prague in Europe, and which is apparently the mecca for alchemy. And yes, Yin Bai looks exactly like Narumi, like exact same character design and everything. And he mm-hmm. ends up running into this girl named Francine who looks exactly like Shirogane, uh, mm-hmm. or Eleonore as we know her. And so... Also, like, I laughed at this one scene where they're studying alchemy, right? And it's, like, it's, uh, the, like, the younger brother, I think, Jin, is at the desk, and he's looking at this, like, naked little pixie or something in this jar. And I'm like, oh, I guess this <laughs> part of alchemy is just, like, <laughs> trapping naked pixie girls in jars. I, I don't know. It was really weird. Um, equivalent hey, he exchange. he needed to take a break that day. That's what you're looking at is break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Francine ends up going to this carnival with both of the brothers and convincing them to put on a puppet show. Uh, she has a very persuasive smile. It's it's nice to see a character who looks like Shirogane like smiling because we don't always see that. But uh, she's you also something been, to look forward to. Yeah, uh, she's been saving like these snacks. Like Jin gave her some like like little churro looking things or something, and she put them in her pocket, and Yin noticed. Uh, and, like, when they're walking home, like, Yin, like, gives her this basket of bread that they got. And he, he like, drops off Jin first because he's super drunk or tired. And, like, then walks. No, yeah, he's passed out drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then walks Francine home. And, like, she lives in this slum. And it becomes clear that she is, like, this angel who is taking care of all of these orphan children by herself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No person <laughs> in the world is like this. There exists no person in reality that is like this. I don't understand why anime You're do this. In reality. <laughs> it's yeah, she's bullshit. like a saint you would hear about. Yeah, and, like, and also yeah, um, I could rant on and on about this. I don't like characters like this. It's bullshit. Anyway, go on. Yeah, she's a, a bit too perfect. Um like and uh, Yin sees that she has this brand on her shoulder, which is the brand of a thief. Which I'm not sure why he recognizes, since he's from China and he just got to Prague. I, I guess he's been in Prague for a while. I guess well, he yeah, yeah. They didn't establish how much time he's been there working on alchemy. They, That's true. I guess they he's just been have here. a sequence, and you're like, all right, some amount of time has passed. That's it. But apparently, so, like, uh, these older people who she's also been giving her bread and she's, like, starving herself while they eat, uh, like, they tell uh, Yin, like, basically, like, please take care of this girl. Like, the thing that she stole was a single egg that she was trying to give a kid with pneumonia <laughs> so he could survive. Egg. There's, like, <laughs> dramatic violins she was playing out. As, as she does this. <laughs> Such bullshit. And they, like... They beg Yin, like, please try to make Francine happy. And so Yin starts to think differently about his pursuit of alchemy, which he's been obsessed with forever, and decides, like, I need to turn this into something that can help others. And But the problem is, Jin hears about all this, and uh, apparently he really liked Francine a lot, too. And now he stops talking to Yin because, like, like, he doesn't he's close like to her. like Francine as much as he just is angry that he is not the one she likes the, like more yeah. because like he's so used to being like oh the handsome brother and he's like I yeah oh, I, I have to always be the one that is more handsome and, and this is dumb <laughs> and so like Yin finds Pran- uh, Francine praying in the cathedral for all of like the illnesses in the world to go oh, away oh god Which sounds praying sounds for- like something that Aqua Vitae could solve praying <laughs> for all of the illnesses in the world to go away 
What utter bullshit. Yep. If someone ever tells you that <laughs> when, when like you ask them what they were, know that they are lying to you in that moment. That that's bullshit. <laughs> well, it could have been one of many things they were praying for. But, uh-huh. yeah. Shirogane has such a pure heart. And Kat, you wouldn't understand that with your dark, dark heart. <laughs> no, you know she was praying for some shit for herself. She was like, hey, I need someone to help me get out of this bullshit situation I'm in. Like, I'm tired of this. <laughs> Yin's kind of good looking. Yeah. And, but but then when someone asks her, her, she's like, I was praying for all of the illnesses in the world to go away. Would, like, blinks but her But it was angel answered by eyes. a devil, obviously, because uh-huh. Jin saw it, so. <laughs> yeah, Jin, Jin sees, like, Yin, like, basically ask Francine to be his wife and say, like, I'll, t- I'll feed the orphans, I'll get a job, and I'll, I'll give up Basically to be alchemy. his wife? No, he straight up asked her to yeah, be his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he proposes These and she accepts. These people have not yeah. even dated. These people don't know shit about each other. You don't just walk up to someone and be like, you know, I think you're a nice person. And like, I've known you for a couple of days and you seem amazing. Whatever this was, 1610. I mean, shit may have been way different. Well, okay, but you also didn't get divorced back (laughs) then. Okay. So, like, in my eyes, if you're going to get married to someone back in the day, it's even more important. Like, that shit's good. Cause, but Kat, right, you look. literally, you literally live in a gutter. You're gonna take what you can fucking get. <laughs> she's gorgeous, and she's got like, she's a saint. She's like a living saint. Oh like, what God. more does Vin need? We just established <laughs> no one is a living saint. There is something wrong well, with this bitch. There is something wrong that. with this bitch. I am telling you now. Wait until like three episodes from now when she's gone insane or something and is like killing orphans. With that creepy smile on her face. <laughs> Something is wrong with her. Oh, shit. Well, the one who definitely looks like they're going to be killing orphans soon is Jin, who's like yeah. super jealous and looks like a demon at the end of this episode because of all this. Yeah, but, yeah. that too. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see Francine turn into a demon too. That would be interesting. How, how many episodes <laughs> do you think this flashback is going to last? Uh, uh, maybe just one more. I think it's basically done. Uh, they covered most of what needs to be covered, I would think. Mm, but I mean, they gotta we'll cover the creepy brothers' like homicidal rampage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they also need to cover why Narumi looks exactly like Yin. But I'm sure we'll find that out. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, let's move on to the last show of the day, Bloom Into You. Uh, episode 9, On Your Marks slash The Unheard Start Signal. Leo, you had an alternate title for this episode. Oh, it was called uh, fucking Stop With All the Damn Running Shows. No, uh, it's called Run Run With the Tongue. <laughs> I like it. And Which is very accurate. at the end, that's exactly what you does. She ends up just kind of running with it. And I was like, yes. I, it's funny because I was watching it and they were doing the track meet. And I was just like, run with the owie. And then <laughs> this yeah. shed scene happened. I was like, nope, tongue's way better. <laughs> well, this would be run with so, the Yuri. So, like, it's almost like they're yeah, little. This would be run with the Yuri. The the fra- other show, they're frames of each other. Yeah. yeah. So, the student council are scrambling to finish last minute preparations for sports day. Oh, by the way, this race happens on sports day. I think I said last week it, it's happening at the cultural festival because I got those two things mixed up. But, yeah. Uh, they ask you to go find some banners from the previous year in a storage shed and she finds them. And just as she does, Toko shows up at the door of the shed. She then very, very creepily blocks you from getting out of the oh, shed and did locks you think, the door of the shed behind her. Did you she think something? You no, know, I was like, is it's something weird. bad about to happen? I was like, is this about to like turn into <laughs> some dark shit? Like I, I wasn't sure for a second. She, was, she keeps pushing stuff to the extent where I'm like, man, if this was a guy, this is starting to get rapey. And then <laughs> yeah. just barely backs off, barely backs off at the last second. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I can empathize because like if I saw my girlfriend in like a shed alone and I was like, oh, I could finally have a moment alone with her. I would not lock the door, though, but I would like <laughs> maybe casually close it and be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> but Toko's a little too over the top here. Like she kabe dons you against the wall and she's like, I need to recharge my batteries. And then then she does like at least ask if she can kiss her instead of just kissing her. Like c- citrus, like she would just kiss her. But like this show, she at least asks, which I appreciate. If you're comparing uh, it to citrus, 
That in itself <laughs> is a bad sign. I'm just saying there's slight differences. <laughs> By the way, there's a new Citrus manga coming out of in course. December 18th. Get hype. Uh-huh. Uh, Citrus Plus. Uh, now with more okay. rape! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what does the plus mean? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so Toko's happy because, like, they haven't found any time to be alone. And after some more kissing, you, like, eventually kind of, like, pushes her face away. More out of, like, annoyance than anything because she's got, like, a lot of work to do for the sports day. Uh, and Toko agrees. And, it, and it's not really doing anything for her Exactly. At this like, point. she's not really feeling it. So... Uh, Toko's like fine but only if you will give her a reward for her good behavior later and it's like you just had such terrible behavior right now Toko like it's not the time to be asking for another reward but uh, she wants uh, you to initiate their next kiss so we then jump to sports day where you is running and she's like pretty good she finishes second in her race uh, and afterwards we get some brief time with uh, Suguru Dojima from the student council who seems pretty interested in Yu's friend Akari and goes to speak with her and Koyomi. And Koyomi is like still struggling to come up with ways to write Toko's character for the student council play. Uh, but she comes to the conclusion that maybe she can write her character as someone no one really knows about and just frame it from that perspective and maybe that will work. Um, afterwards, Yu grabs a drink from the Venny machine and she bumps into Seiji, uh, who asks her if she's oh, feeling lonely. Oh, this scene... So I liked this scene. I thought oh, the scene was good. You. Oh, the uh, scene with so, the with like the water bottle, and then like seeing everything's yes. like it's through. Yeah, I like this a lot. Well, I liked the visuals of that, but I also liked that they finally made a distinction. Like this Seiji kid is like actually asexual. Like he actually does not feel love with for anybody, and like he kind of talks with uh, you and you is basically like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm like the same way. Like I don't feel anything for Toko, blah, blah, blah. But, I'm like, just sitting here going, you two are some sad ass motherfuckers, but there are people <gasps> like the this. Fuck? There are people like this. Like I know one personally <sighs> who like, just like does not feel anything. He does not feel love like, or this type of romantic love for people, which I'm, I would be okay with. I guess I just don't like the way that it's played out. And then they're like, I yeah. can't fall in love with anybody. And I was just like, dude, Jesus. Well, I think some of those people were kind of seeing like representation for themselves in you and then got disappointed when it became clear that like, oh no, you is going to like break out of her shell and fall in love by the end of the show. Like, I guess. So now that Seiji is here, it makes a distinction. Like Seiji's like, no, you're not like me when he I, sees her walk I away. I think it's because yeah. I've seen too many people whine about love yeah growing up so like if i see any at any point now i'm just like shut the fuck up yeah you'll, you'll be <laughs> fine you'll be fine just <laughs> trust me it is still pretty early in their lives to be thinking like this but yeah um so yeah uh after that whole scene riko sensei's girlfriend miyako shows up to watch the teacher's relay race and sayaka greets her and Miyako's like more interested in seeing Rico fall on her butt because she's not like a great athlete and like taunting her than actually cheering her on. And I just thought that was great. Uh, <laughs> and like Miyako watches uh, Sayaka walk over to Toko and she's like, oh, that's clearly the girl she's in love with. She looks like she'd be a handful romantically. Uh, so, yeah, it turns out the reason Toko is really pumped up for this competitive relay race is because she's got this friendly rivalry rivalry with the leader of the basketball club, uh, Sarazawa. And Akari is also in the basketball club and is sad. Like she couldn't run fourth in the relay because she wanted to pass the baton to this, that senpai guy that she really likes. Uh, so she's like a little mopey about that, but eventually the relay begins. There's an insert song that plays over it. It's pretty nice. It's called Rise. It's sung by Rico Azuna, who also sings the OP for the show. Uh, and it's like the other song on her like OP single album. And as you watch as Toko give her all as the anchor of their relay, like time just seems to slow down for her. And to me, it seemed like something finally seemed to click into place in her head. Like her breath just seems to be taken away, like watching Toko run. And, like, all these feelings she didn't think she could have, like, definitely start to make their existence known to her. Um, oh, my God. I've gone back in time. We're doing Run with the Wind again. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it pretty much so is a very so similar is. scene. It was kind <laughs> yeah, of weird. Similar. 
Yeah. This podcast would never end. It's Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's funny, girl. I can't take this. Oh, my God. So, okay. Uh, they end up getting third in the relay. <laughs> you is in a bit Wait, of a no, daze isn't it afterwards. Because she says, like, do they get, you get second. It's either, okay, maybe it's second. I don't remember. Yeah, It's they just were, important that she lost to her friend. She lost to Sarazawa, yeah. Yu's in a daze. She's, like, lost in thought, and, like, somebody, like, snaps her out of it. Uh, there's a really cute moment also when Miyako, who's still, like, near the school, texts Rico, the teacher, to ask, like, what does Miss Last Place want for dinner tonight? And, like, Rico, like, looks around angrily and spots her and then types back in all caps, I want meat. And I was <laughs> like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I like their relationship. So, yes, Toko gets you back in the shed and is like, it's time for my reward now. And, like, insists that you be the one to initiate. And, like, you, like, leans in. Like, she almost gives into this, but then gets this really bad feeling in, like, the pit of her stomach that this is a line she shouldn't cross. Like, she does, she knows she doesn't really like Toko, or that's what she keeps telling herself. And for breaking her promise, Toko's like, all right, then I'm going to do whatever I want. She starts French kissing you, running with that tongue. Uh, oh yeah <laughs> which is going definitely further than they've gone before and mm-hmm. you kind of stops her at first but then kind of like citrus is like but it felt so good Kimo and they continue Chin. kissing yeah it's like, Kimo Chin. I'm like mm, now we're getting into porn territory but like i think it's important what you thinks to herself at the end of the scene because she's like it's oh it's so it's like perfectly natural to find comfort in the way that toko is nice to other people like spreads goodwill without asking for anything in return and like also her silky smooth hair oh and those eyelashes Uh. oh and that really fast heartbeat i'm feeling that must be hers right it couldn't it couldn't possibly be my heart Uh that's beating so fast so like yeah she's She's totally beginning to feel those feelings, Ooh. even if she's like I still that lying moment, to herself. That moment when she's like staring at her run, she fell in love in that moment. Like it's over. Yeah, absolutely. It's just about her like yeah. admitting it now and like dealing with the consequences because I'm sure it's going to be like, exactly. I, not a me, can't deal with this. And now she doesn't love you anymore and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be some drama. Yeah. Has it been uh, completely established why Toko is totally, uh, committed to you uh i think it's just because she seems to be like the one person who see who knows about the other side of her who who she opened up to i still don't know full like fully why toko opened up to her yeah Yeah. opened up to her why exactly yeah that's the part of the show where i'm like i don't quite get why she chose this girl to open up to maybe because she knew that like she would never fall in love back with her and I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out more because, like, as Kat was saying, there's definitely going to be some drama with Toko, like, not being able to, like, return Yu's love now that Yu finally falls in love. It's definitely going to be drama with that. I don't know. But, mm. Yeah. Bloom into you. No flower imagery this episode. So sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, well, I'm, I don't know. I <laughs> didn't that really I pay too anyway. close to the backgrounds, but <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see anything. So. Uh, but now we, that we've reviewed Run with the Wind twice this episode, it's time to say <laughs> goodbye. Aww. Till next week. <laughs> Shit. All right. So, Kat, take us out. Yeah, so thanks for listening. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe to us on YouTube to get updates on new podcasts or videos. You can also find our podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. And follow us at, on Twitter at Nerdum and Other for updates as well. Also, Go on our fucking Discord. It's called Nerdum and Other Nonsense. You can find the link like Damn it. on different Cat, things. We told you to stop threatening our listeners. I mean, they can <laughs> take We've it. We talked about this. It's oh, look, fine. They like it. You know, they they're well, some big will probably boys do and like girls. <laughs> you you know you like it. Come on, babies. Uh, but yeah, come come <laughs> find us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you next time. <laughs> Later. Bye.